So, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whenever you listen to this. This is Matthew Bailey alongside my critiquing partner in crime, Ricardo Medina. Yes, the very salty Ricardo Medina. Hello, 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 everyone. Yeah, salty for some odd reason. I have no idea. I am I'm yes. just cool like a fan, man. This, this dude is salty. Salty for some reason. Then we'll find out why. Yeah, we will find <laughs> out eventually. Yeah. Right. So, uh, today we're going to be, well, this is going to be more or less like a two part or a three part, if you yeah. will, review, uh, right? Yeah, we, what, we're just kind of catching up with all of the old stuff. Uh, we're going to catch up with, we're going to do a review of Zootopia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, followed by um, the long awaited Netflix um, second, season. Se- second season of Dear Devil. Yeah. And then we're going to get to what is arguably going to be the most divisive movie of 2016. Yes, it did. Batman v Superman, Dawn oh. of Justice. Yeah, I really didn't need to put the salt in the popcorn for this. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> let's yeah. uh, right, so, Matthew, Matthew, you did not see no, Zootopia. No, yeah, I didn't see Zootopia. Okay, I saw it. Um, so, I just, you know, going to do a quick, quick run through of Zootopia, what we thought about it. Um, I really like this movie. Um, mm-hmm. It's a, a really well done movie. It's well told it has a great message um what it wants to do with it and it's basically about you could say it's about political correctness that's kind of the underlying message and oh. not only it's it's about political correctness but kind of the dark side of political correctness and how to address something like that so we have the star main character uh, judy hops she is basically something akin to like if you want to do a modern allegory something like say you know a female pilot or a black doctor or something like that. You know, the idea of, you know, getting into a system because of some being a minority or being something. And basically she gets through because of something akin to an affirmative action type program. Um, her being a bunny rabbit in this world of animals. Right. So it's t- take of it as a childish version of um, Bojack Horseman. It's all, ah. it's all animals, right. conscious, and they kind of acknowledge the differences. And mm-hmm. the world that is built is catering to their needs. Right. And so, so, so let me guess. So you can't laugh at, like, see an elephant for being so big because it's an or, elephant, or, right? Or something like that, mm-hmm. right. And the, what they do with it is they, so Judy Hopps' character, she is a bunny rabbit. Right? Mm-hmm. Bunnies, uh, in their stereotype, they make a lot of children. Yeah. And they're not supposed to be police officers. You know, they're not supposed to be the, you know, police officers. It's for the big animals. Yeah, the and, and, and the tough-looking animals. The, right, and the know, cute. Lions and yeah. water buffalo and so and so. And so what she is, she says she want to be a police officer. And they, they start the story with that, with mm. her being a kid, and they, everyone laughs at her. And even though she's, she, in the beginning, she's bullied. Um, and she kind of gets around her bullying, and she's very, very clever and sharp and smart um, as a, a girl. And she's a female as well, so that's all a big factor as well. And her parents discourage her from becoming doing something which is incredibly dangerous which is being a police officer right and they wanted to be a carrot farmer and <laughs> stuff like farmer. that yeah yeah so <laughs> it's the world of this animal and basically it's a big allegory for, for modern political correctness and basically yeah. identity politics and race relations in the modern world right and but, do, uh, but they, as you mentioned that is that something that you know um adult viewers will pick up on easily yeah was it that something you just had to really dig into no no to you don't have realize. to dig in, you don't have to dig into it but what they do with it is the get into the well i'll get into that later anyway okay. so it's judy hop she what she is she's a cop she's the first kind of she's the first bunny cop essentially oh okay. um first was rabbit cop um and then they give her a crappy like um parking beat oh to do. so she has to just do parking tickets and but she's really really sharp and smart and she end up solving she end up figuring out and, and picking up on a problem um it had this case where this guy went went missing mm-hmm. so the story is that um while she was supposed to be on this case of uh, the case is there's a bunch of missing predator animals. Basically equivalent of predator. They've gone missing for some reason. We know right, right. And it's unclear why. And then she decides to take the case on her own, which she's not supposed to, because the main cop, the water buffalo the chief, this is played by Idris Elba. Yeah. Yeah. He kind of wanted to fire her and he hated the idea of um, who kind of jumping up and helping out. This was, I think, I think it was Octavia Spencer was the voice of the female otter. Who's kind of complaining that her son was missing and she's missing the son the, sorry not her son her husband okay her husband was missing for a good chunk of time in the story and she she took up the case mm-hmm. so he said all right the water buff kind of gave her ultimatum he said look if you don't find him yeah within 48 hours you have to quit the force wow right so it was a big ultimatum and so on so and then she meets um early on she meets she meets this fox character played by oh god was this boy from arrested development who played michael in arrested development he, um, the smart fox, she get, she kind of make friends with all. She, she figure him out as this kind of scheme, schemer. 
Yeah. And, you know, he kind of fulfilled the stereotype of foxes. And they, they do a whole backstory with him as well. Um, I don't want to get into the two stories because that's spoiling it. But basically, they, they learn the case. They go through a lot of the shenanigans of Zootopia, which is all of the animal worlds. Yeah. You know, where animals would live, like jungles and, what you know, where polar bears would live. So, the, um, it's about environment for every animal, essentially. Right. And so, so basically, well... Zootopia itself is just a country then it's not it's like a city it's yeah, basically I, I a assume it's a city but the way how you said no, you know different regions no no it's like a really yeah it's a really well structured city and they, they kind of make it out as if well Zootopia is like where all the animals can live together in the, in the, they never expl- expand the world but when your guard is that the, the animals in the expanded world cannot do interact that much all right, all right. Um, but they do a good job with the whole stereotyping double stereotype problem so she the what the twist was is that it, it gets into the dark side of political correctness of basically vilifying a group mm-hmm. for being quote unquote aggressive or being powerful naturally, natural inclinations to power. And they do that aspect of it. And you know, right now in political correctness in the in the grander scheme of things, that's what's kinda going on in the real world. It's not just her trying to triumph and be, you know, um the best that right. Well, the best it's, that she could be. Right. In yeah. in a in a grand in a b- b- bigger space but it's about people who are quote unquote aggressive being seen as gentle and it's ah. that whole subversion of stereotypes there's a great bit okay it's, it's a great bit in the in the beginning in the middle of the film with the slots and how they're moving so slow yeah so i it, remember it, that from the trailer it, right, it, right it yeah. plays on that stereotype but the, there's a final bit with the slot that subverts that that is so so really well done and it, it does do a lot of great stuff in the movie right. uh, i give this uh low imax I thought the third act was a little weak. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, well, what about like voice acting and stuff? You oh no, right. That, okay, or, so from know, animation, te- no, like, I'm not going to even get like technical. It was perfect. Don't worry about it. Everything like little simple things like um, Judy's nose sniffing for a little mm-hmm. while. Judy being really smart. The dialogue is very funny and perfect. It's very very clever. As I say, the only thing I'll say is the third act was a little rushed. Right. And I thought again, me, it'll kind of spoil it for say what it is, but I thought it should have developed the character who is revealed. Ah. There's a reve- the revelation, and when that's happened, I thought they should have fleshed that out a little more. All right. And I thought it was a little, little on the weak side. I give it a low IMAX. It's still very well yeah. done. I totally recommend it. Still one, it, I probably make it best in top ten of the year. Well, yeah, that's what I was about to mention. Yeah, is it, it is it, is it? Um, because I'm thinking, you know, around that same time last year, we got Inside Out, and you know, right. that to know to be right. Well, um, Brilliant. one of my favorite movies yeah. of, of last year. So, yeah. um, is it, is it, nah, it, does it, is it up to that level? Nah, like, it, you know, it's a great. I, I can't say it on that level, but because they, they cater to. They cater to the political correctness stuff well, and then they carry the argument a further logical jump. Yeah, I thought it was still well done for that, and I, right. I actually really, really like this movie. Okay, um, so as a as a Disney animated film as opposed to a Pixar film, yeah, um, how, how does it does it hold up? Do you take oh no, yeah, totally. Um, yeah. I actually put it personally, I liked it more than uh, about as much as Frozen. I'll say, um, ah, pretty right. high. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like Tangle, it don't it up there. It's it's really good and well. You know the this is the other. If you want to look at it as a dark side, it really catered to the furry crowd. Jeez. <laughs> so you know all of this. I mean, you might see a bunch of like you see a bunch of porn about the goodie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want to go there. Yeah. Uh, let, 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 let's not imagine a porn version yeah. of Zootopia. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it, they they already did it, all the work for us already. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's Zootopia. Um, okay. Cool. Well, I will. A, I will. It, I will try yeah. to, to check that out. Yeah. It's uh, nothing. Uh, it's yeah. nothing. Nothing major to, to like totally talk about so much in the sense of just go see it. I, mm. I totally recommend it. We don't need to like get into any big depth about. It. it does a lot of things that I really enjoyed and I didn't expect to enjoy so much. Yeah, um, yeah. But it was still very smart. It fast humor. And it did things that, you know, usual this Disney did. You know, it, it's fallen into the, the DreamWorks kind of traps of, you know, usually DreamWorks will just have characters with a snarky face and then some singing, oh, and dancing, yeah. and a, lazy, a lot of lazy animation. Um, this didn't do that. It had a dancing sequence in the ending, but it made sense what it was. Right. Um, and it was simple. And it, again, they did the whole. You know, the, the message I think was the whole, the, one of the big problems with identity politics is that whole way called cry bullying, kind of appealing to being, a, you know, false victim narrative kind of thing mm-hmm. and using that victim narrative as a weapon. That's what it did to subvert a lot of identity politics. Okay. And I think the ultimate answer was, the, the kind of message to take away from the film was, do not sacrifice the good for the perfect. That's what it huh. felt like. And, and her character kind of came to the conclusion. Yeah. Again, the third act was a bit rushed and what they did was it had problems with, it got out a change what happened to her where she where she um when she well it had a part where she went back home and i didn't like that and i didn't like what it, but then she went back home and learned a lesson about the car and i don't want to spoil anything with this. no no Seriously, please, please, really please, so. please avoid, don't yeah. please don't i really yeah. want to try to avoid and you know any spoiler whatsoever with this so um yeah i recommend zubopia i All really right. liked it it was fun it was well done 
Um, yeah, that's yeah. it. That, you know, short review. Okay, That's a cool. shortcut through. We don't have to really to get into too much because if you want to spoil it, we had to talk about it. But yeah, yeah but, but, and but I, I, I didn't even see it either. So right, it since really you didn't see it, I, you know, it don't make sense to have. I, yeah, but I'll just talk about the film and yeah. just sell it. And why movie. really have a spoiler review of a movie like Zootopia anyway? Right, I mean, exactly. it's, it's not necessary. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's move on to Daredevil season two. Yes. Um, the long awaited yes. second season of one of the, the biggest surprises of 2015 in yes. terms of, um, you know, um, yeah. TV. Yeah. Um, Netflix's Daredevil, you know, it was a series that we were looking forward to for the longest while, yep. you know, right after what happened with 2003's um, Daredevil and yeah. um, 2005 or 2006, if I'm not mistaken, Electra. Yeah. You know, two films that really tried way too hard to yeah. be great and edgy. Oh, that's a mess. Yeah, and I take it really is just the PG-13 ratings and, Rubbish, you know, what, well, that's one thing to blame. Well, I, I can't really blame Jennifer case, Garner no, or that's a case Ben Affleck. That's a case but, of director Scott. Um, the Daredevil, if I remember correctly, the director Scott's supposed to be a lot better. But so I've heard actually. Yeah. Yes, I think I remember watching it and don't remember it being better. So I that's why I kind of forget. I, I probably had to go back and watch it because, like, I remember the seeing it in theaters. It sucked. People <laughs> tell me go see go see the director's cut, and I was like, it, I watch it and then I just almost immediately forget that I watched it. So I don't remember it yeah. being particularly better. Um, yeah. But I know a lot of people defend you know that old Ben Affleck like Daredevil and yeah. But I, but I think I think maybe well, um, if I'm not mistaken. The Devil itself, this this film, the 2003 one, came out a year before The Punisher. Right. Right? This is, and uh, a year, Tom, this yeah. is Thomas Jane's one, right? Right, and a year yeah. after Blade 2. Right. Both of which are Marvel films, both of which were rated R. They were given a hard R for obvious reasons, you know, the yeah. violent content and stuff. Yeah, and so, you know, you have The Devil, you have this character, you know, who's wearing tights. He's a superhero, basically. So, how do you have an R-rated superhero movie, yeah. you know? And I guess Marvel was, you know, wasn't sure what to do. So, you know, yeah. slap on a PG-13 rating, have right. a big... After, you know, Ben Affleck, you know, he was big at the time, you know. Yeah. You know, he was dating G Lo at the time. Yeah, he, he had just, you know, he I, had films on his the, belt. The, you know? the sad part is that he was more public celebrity than a actual proper celebrity, is where you know that problem he had. So he was more more noticeable at the time, again, being part with J Lo. It yeah. was just paparazzi and I said, Oh Of course, yeah, yeah. And he was just suffering in his thing. I think it was really a low point in his career. I mean it wasn't as low as say G Lee. G Lee was, oh was like a true low point. But yeah. like it was still that is when he was really on the decline. And he had to kinda of come back and you know, bring himself back up with a lot of other stuff. So, yeah, know, I think he kind of really, really validated himself somewhat with the tongue, which I really liked. So, yeah, yeah, which was a great movie, yeah. by the way. Um, um, was, and the one, was the one where he played George Reeves Superman? Um, what was the name of that movie again? Hollywood Land, I think. Uh, Hollywood Land, which I have not seen actually. I, yeah. I believe it's about it. It was based on the, the true story about the guy who George Reeves, played yeah. the first Superman. George Reeves, yeah, George Reeves, right? Yeah, one of the early Superman, not the first. Not the first, okay. Yeah, okay. 50 Superman. Oh, oh not the 40s one, okay, all right. Yeah, um, was, yeah. And. Well, one thing from the from the first Daredevil movie, people were actually kind of um, I wouldn't say blown away, but they were actually impressed by Jennifer Garner's portrayal of right. Electra. Yeah. That she was given her own spin off movie yeah, and honestly was, I saw it once on cable, forgot about it. I saw it in theaters and yeah. that was wow, that was my time. And I thought yeah. it would be good. I mean I, I at the time I, I when I saw her I was like, All right, you know, I don't like Daredevil so much, but she was there. Yeah, and it, 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 it just came off like a, like an X Men movie to me. Yeah, had, I, I remember this one character who had the tattoos that were moving yeah, about. I, yeah. I just I was just thinking X Men, X Men, yeah. X Men. This is that X Men movie yeah. trying to be a Electro yeah, movie. Really yeah. Um, so anyway. you know, years later now, um, right. we were hearing about you know the TV series that's coming yeah. up, and then lo and behold, last year we got it. Yeah. And we also got um, Jessica Jones as well too, right. which was and which Marvel, I actually saw yeah, and, and Marvel, enjoyed Marvel reached well. Marvel reached a point where they so big that they could do small. You know, they, yeah. it's just about the brand, and they just get really good talent, talent for people to do basically a new noir crime, crime, you know. Comic, yeah, which you which know. which Jessica Jones was right. Yeah. Which were both both Jessica Jones and and, uh, and yeah, yeah, just was. Is noir, how it's cut, how it's how it's shot, um, a lot of shadow and and smoke in places that do need shadow and smoke. That's noir. Yes, of course. And yeah. you with this, um, I really love season one. Um, Excellent, yeah. excellent season one. A really great introdu- introduction of the character. Does a good job. Um, Cox. I also love the characterization as well too. You know, right. you really understood the characters, their yeah. motivations, the emotions, all that stuff. Uh, Charlie Cox. I had some issues with his some his um, like delivery. A little bit. Um, we realize that the, what happens is that you know is the typical British actor trying to do American accent and problem now. So you end up getting this kind of generic transatlantic accent instead. No, I just stop here for a bit. Like. <laughs> I never knew this guy was British. Yeah. I, I am now hearing this for the first right. time. All this time I'm watching this film, I'm, I'm watching this series, I'm like, yeah. 
It's kind of like, hey, he's it's, American, right? Yeah, Clearly, no, it's, okay, no, yeah. it's seeming like Rick and Walking Dead, no, British actor. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it's the act. But with Rick, it, because you get he gets a gen- generic Southern drawl accent, you don't really mind. Mm-hmm. But with with Matt Murdock's fusion, Charlie Cox is Matt Murdock. You're not sure. He's clearly not New York. But yeah, no, no, right. yeah, the character is. I'm brown and bred in New York, Hell's Kitchen, you know? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I'm not hearing that though. So it's just this generic sounding kind of thing. And because I don't think he's that great of an actor, he kind of stumbles at times when it comes to, it has that kind of wooden delivery. Yeah. Um, a lot of um, people complain about Foggy last season. And well, he, he, he said that he didn't have, um, the actor said how he didn't get enough time to prep and, you know, rehearse the role as much. So that's why it came across a bit stilted. Um, okay. But, the person, the big standout car- character was um, Kingpin. Yeah, Kingpin uh, was, played um, by uh, Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah. yeah, Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin was excellent. Yes, excellent yes. character development. Um, great backstory. They did a good job of, of yeah. setting up and building this character. And, and, and he was like both terrifying and at the same sympathetic. time sympathetic. Yeah, you yeah, could understand where he's job. coming from. They did a great job with his he was, character. He was a damaged character. And you yeah. understand, you, there was this one particular episode that really explained why he was so yeah. damaged. You, you know? get to see his full backstory, you know, what he and his dad and his mom. And the, 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 you, know, the, the, you get to see him being as the total sociopathic product of Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. And they did a great job with that. Uh, yeah. Um, and of season, course, the, the action as well too was yeah. great. Um, yeah. I just thought that, you know, him, just certain little piece and issues as well, but right. I understand because it's an origin story in right. a way, so you have to see what happened before and, you know, yeah. just what leads up to him becoming the right. daredevil. Right. They, they did a good, a good job of just doing a good, bunch of great back characters. They did Stick. They did, you know... Um, yeah, Stick played by Scott Glenn. Yeah. Axe yeah. parents. <laughs> yeah. Um, they did a good job with all the material and the fight the fighting one of the action sequences was kick ass. Yeah, brilliant and fight they, choreography. Yeah, they ended it off great. Um yeah, so, the you know the fa- the, the face yeah. off between right. Daredevil and Kingpin. Right. That's all I'll say right. about yeah. that if you haven't seen it. Right, really well and, done. And then of course we had Jessica Jones. Yeah. Um, you know, great introduction to her character. It was a character yeah. I never knew of before. I yeah. didn't know much. Well, I heard the name before. I never heard much about her. Right. Then they introduced uh, Luke Cage. Yeah. I forgot the actor's name, but I know he's getting his own show. Right, that's um, coming. That's coming September. End, yeah, September. Mm-hmm. And it was a trailer, actually, at the end of the last episode of Daredevil Season 2, which I didn't see. Right. So, did you see it before we get to the there review? Was no f- I, I, I just wanted to know there was no full Luke Cage trailer. If I know correctly, there was a something along the lines of like just a Taika logo. And then we get to see a shot with just him. There's just a quick scene with the police shooting him in a boxing ring. Okay. In a so boxing, like a boxing studio kind of thing. Oh, okay. That's I, I was expecting like an actual yeah, trailer. Full, like what it didn't feel like with. a full trailer. It was just right. this, this scene with him shooting him. And basically the idea is bulletproof. And again, with the identity politics and all the Black Lives Matter political stuff, that, that imagery is very important. So, you know, nah. the bulletproof black man. Um, so <laughs> okay, I see what angle they're going to play right. with this. Right. I, I hope they don't play it up too much. Um, but I expect them to do a good chunk of it, especially with the current political real world climate that we're going on. Um, yeah. I will just have the air, the air to the ground with stuff like that. Of course, this. they've been so, doing that for decades. Actually. Yeah, yeah, so. Um, right, so, well, let me just, if I could just get just into the story. Yes. Well, I'm not going to run through all 13 episodes, of course. You right. Know. Um, so it follows actually right after the um, Jessica Jones season one. Yeah. So actually, you don't really need to see Jessica Jones season one to, to pick up on the story, but it wouldn't hurt if you do. Yeah. But of course, you have to see season one of Daredevil to really get what's going on. Yeah. So, um, Basically, Mad Murdock, Foggy Nelson, and um, Karen. Yeah. Well, Car- the Karen Page. Yeah, Karen Page, the character who was introduced in the in the uh, first season. Yeah. They have their own law firm now. You know, they're handling cases and whatnot. Yeah. And um, s- well, there's this. All right. Well, not so much an instance. Well, there is a new character on the scene. But mm-hmm. well, we mentioned this person before, the Punisher, yeah. Frank Castle. Yeah. Played by. Us, um, um, John Burn Burntal. Yeah, Burntal, right. Yeah, from we, we who played Shane we from Sh- Walking Dead. Shane Mang from Yeah, Shane Mang. Now I'm saying. Yeah. So, so he's this vigilante, he has his own brand of justice, which is basically shoot first, don't ask questions yeah. at all. Yeah. You know? He has his reasons why, and of course the devil stumbles onto him. Yeah. I you know I, I and I like that whole back and forth, you know, with you know their their ideologies. Yeah. No, but the, his his introduction for that first episode was brilliant. Yes. Excellently it was. done. They just hyped it. You don't know because the thing is I was thinking, I was like, I know Punisher's supposed to be in this season. They hyped it, but the way how they did it, it still got you. Because it's like, oh wait, is it could be something else now. Yeah. So the way how they hyped it as if, well, is this new badass crew? Out and it's like a bunch of military grade hardware badasses and you take in it's a whole new gang. Yeah, it's yeah, not. Tip. It's just one it's man. It's one dude. Oh yeah. shit! And that's basically the introduction for the first episode to introduce him. It's just one guy doing all this damage, and like, whoa, this guy is awesome. Yeah. It's, it's and, and and sorry, and then also too, well, 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 
along that thing, what's going on with 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 Punisher? We also we also get a chance to see Electra. Yeah, I forgot the actress's name. You yeah. know, she's she's well talented and stuff. Yeah, and basically she um, she was an old flame of Man Murdock, and yeah. she's here in the city basically to take down the Hand, yeah. which was this uh, this group of ninjas, this clandestine group of ninjas that were introduced in the uh, season one yeah and they have this grand scheme to more or less destroy new york and you know or something like that i yeah, wouldn't get too much into it right so okay i just wanted to talk about murdoch first i'll talk about uh lecture second and uh okay then, i thought you were gonna mention the and, um and punisher and second and then, and then, and then all right well, go so ahead. they introduced matt matt is matt is doing his thing now he still he have the suit Suit is established. Yeah, the, the new suit. It improves. Right. It's slightly changed from the end of season one, I noticed. So it's slightly a little better, a little more, you gain a little more red in it, a little mm-hmm. dark. It's slightly changed. So you can tell some time passed with him and um, I forget the guy's name who's helping him out with the suit. Yeah, I forgot his name too. Yeah, he, um, I would like, they, they build into the crime and then they introduce Punisher really, really good. Yeah. John and early as well too. Yeah, I love early that. as possible. Early as possible. Yeah. John yeah. Bernthal's Punisher, in my opinion, is the best, the best live action Punisher. By far, I agree. Right? I agree. We've had two Punishers before. Well, sorry, three Punishers before. Yeah, uh, Dolph Lundgren, right. Thomas Jean, and, and I forgot uh, the, the third guy. Right. The other guy, the Last guy wasn't bad, eh? I mean, but it's just the movie didn't work. And the yeah, the movie was yeah, just, just too a over the top and right. crazy to really and make sense. Yeah, this is the best. This is what Punishers. And they didn't do it. In fact, in some ways, I find it better than the comic Punisher because it's not um, overplayed. Yeah, it's not this ridiculous overplayed character that was, you know, not, just, not too much machismo. Just, yeah, yeah, this yeah. ridiculous, like over the top kind of childishness. He, he came across as a really, really great, sympathetic, workable character. Um, yeah. And um, and what 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 I what I love the most about his character or how he was how he was portrayed in this series is how realistic yeah. it was. You know, very grounded. And but he, good like grounded. you know, like not just about you know his motivations, why he does what he does, but how yeah. the public responds it, yeah. how the law, yeah. You know, responses to attitude. his actions, yeah, and he has a great line of the, you know, you you hit them and they get up and I hit them and they stay down. You know that yeah. that mindset, no. Mm-hmm. And yeah, for that kind of crime, you totally understand where he kind of coming from, where you know where his reasoning is. You know, it's that whole extreme of where white is a dead will the cross the line and kind of make dead out to look like a bit of a hypocrite. The that's writing, true, that's I'll true. say I'll say the writing wasn't as strong this season personally. Um, yeah, uh, um, there were it, some piece in issues, um, yeah. especially. In my opinion, um, episode five, which I thought was probably the most boring right. episode, that's yeah. where we finally got the um, to where we finally got the introduction of Electra, right. and you saw you know the flashbacks of them, and then when they right. start the relationship, I yeah. just thought that was just like a slow, right. slow so burn. You here's know? the overall, more overall kind of run with this. Uh, so with the arc, okay, so the main arc with Punisher works out where it's this kind of a grander military conspiracy involving his family, his death. Yes. Um, this is not a big spoiler, but, um, but it's it's basically that. It's just this grander military conspiracy. It's family that is an accident, but not it not a not an entire accident. It's mm-hmm. like a kind of contrived scenario okay. that end up causing this family's death. And now you find out um, characters who's close to him was end up being a villain, and it have a whole story. I thought they should have focused on that entirely for this season, and make that a big deep conspiracy. Instead, they just kind of wash over it. And then they focus on Electra a lot for some reason. Yeah. And I hated what they did with Electra. And again, slight spoilers here. Electra is special. She's a magic person. Yes, she is. And I <laughs> hated that. Um, to me, if you're doing the whole Electra thing being a problem and she's an outright villain, that's fine. Um, but my attitude is that they could have done... What they should have done is just have two or three episodes. You see that those middle episodes? Yeah. With Electra um, having... Ma- well, Matt... Okay, so a bit of reveal. Matt had to represent Punisher when he's caught. In, some, in, in the early seasons um, and they, they do a great arc with Punisher in the prison mm-hmm. and that I don't, that was, that was I'm not going to spoil what happens in the prison nope no no <laughs> it was awesome it was awesome but so what? It, but I find what it could have focused on is they should have just, the purpose of the lecture was just Matt miss, missing Punisher's trial that is what they should have done right that's it keep Electra just being a spoiled rich brat and you keep the corporate espionage stuff with her only yeah that's it in, 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 in her said, case, I, it was just like, yeah, you know, you're, you're, you're this character, you're the theater, but you're not no, this could, lawyer. No, ah. but I couldn't take, I really couldn't take, because they're bringing in a bunch of mystical mumbo jumbo involving her character. I hated that. That stuff sucked. That didn't, I didn't get into that at all. This, I, I just, thought it just took away from the, totally, from the gritty realism of it, you know? I, I but but don't get me wrong, like, I love ninjas. I, I love decent. seeing ninjas. And, I love yeah, ninjas you know? too. But, um. <laughs> magic, but I just can't take magic ninjas seriously. And they have yeah. too much mystical mumbo jumbo nonsense. And I couldn't take it seriously. And here's the thing it's validated. It's not like the characters believe that to be true. And it's not true. It's validated. You see 
Mr. Yeah, Mumbo Jumbo yeah. in the season. I was like, ah, uh, you serious? Here's my thing. I find the focus on Punisher, and the f- and I, I'll say ultimately the finale was a disappointment for this season. I would agree. I yeah. thought like you know, um, the last two episodes kind of rushed. Like they didn't know where they were going, and especially the way how the second and last episode ends. Is like yeah, um, that was the best way they could end this episode yeah. really. Yeah, and then the end comes is like yeah, okay, it felt rushed. That's work. it. It rushed, you know. Yeah, I yeah. I, had, I had problems with that. Um, the thing of it is that the with this season, I find where well, if it was up to me, I, it would have be more Punisher, and it would be Dare, Daredevil and, and Punisher together in a final big battle and against the military stuff. Keep yeah. it about the military conspiracy. You know, I don't want to spoil anything, but basically, it's about this military conspiracy involving lawyers and a cover up and something to do with Afghanistan and drugs and it have a whole thing. Right. And well, Hell's Kitchen and so on, so 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 so. Right. But and but here's here's they my. It, they didn't flesh that out. They should have spent time flesh that out, make that a big deal. Right. And come but, on, Punisher didn't use the damn minigun in the end. Then. Come on. Stress, <laughs> stress, stress, stress. Seriously, but, I wanted Punisher to rip a dude in pieces with a minigun. Yeah, but here's my my little um my my point of view though. Um, I think like. Okay, I will just use Walking Dead for example. You know, like normally, episode of like a season of Walking Dead will start in one one point, and then probably end somewhere before the mid season, and then lead into something else. You know, and yes, it's sixteen episodes, so you can kind of get away with that. So in this case, it's kind of like well, first you have Punisher, and then the Punisher story kind of just takes a back seat, and then we have Elektra, right? And then you see more Elektra, and then you start to bring back the um, Punisher, and it's all this kind of ebb and flow. You know, sometimes it works because you know, like if you're binging the show, and you actually should, by the way, uh, the you know, it kind of works. But you know, at the same time, it's kind of like it's losing focus. You know, is another, it about this? Should I care about yeah. this? No, that's another yeah. problem. Um, this didn't really work as a binge. Like it would have been preferable if it was just episodic. You know, waiting between episodes matter more in terms of how you think. I find, oh. I find it didn't, didn't work. I binged it and I just didn't enjoy it. I, I get the feeling that I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much. Mm. Like if, if it was episodic over a week, I would have been like, all right, cool. But this didn't feel like that at all. I don't know. That's yeah. just thing I remember my two cents on that. I find compared to the first season, which was definitely bingeable. Yeah. This one, not But so then much. again, in that case, you only had one antagonist well right. one main antagonist yeah. which is the king a better focus so yeah. i guess in with this one you know it, it was just all jumbled up you know yeah. um you know another problem have, um, you have karen page and stuff. karen page felt like lois lane in man of steel you know the plot she was where the plot needed her to be oh this season. i had, <laughs> had some issues with that yeah. um yeah that, i think that's about it I, I think for the most part i really like this uh punisher series this season yeah it's good but it wasn't as good it could have been better it had they could have done much more with it and I just couldn't get into like why, you know, why it is that, you know, a lot of things happen. Like, oh, d- this is why you're doing this? Really? All right. Eh, okay. Yeah. And I couldn't, it really, Electra is the problem I, I find. She, was pu- she wasn't put in and developed very well. I've, as my, my attitude was, bring her in, you know, have her distract Matt for, for a crucial point in, in the promotion and then get her out. That's it. Uh, they shouldn't have made the whole season about her. And I had a problem with that. Yeah, yeah, but then the fans would have expected more out of her. I no. would, I honestly would have no. expected more out of her with yeah, that. Tease all of that for season three. Have a be the focus of season three, not season two. Punisher, shall make it all about Punisher and that arc, mm. in my opinion. Make it all about him. He was great. Um, he was the best singer of the season by far. This yeah, is, it was. This is, a, this is a really great part when he went, goes into a pawn shop. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Um, I would say this is probably, well, this is actually more violent if, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brutal. It's no, really, it's really, super, really brutal. Super brutal. Not not overly bloody and stuff, but when there's blood, there is uh, yeah, blood. It, it, when, it, when bones are broken, when <laughs> yeah. when people get killed, people get killed. There's a flagrant use of shotgun in this movie. Yeah. Um, we get the, the one take fight scene as well too yeah. in this case it's just at the devil versus um, uh, a biker gang yeah. at the staircase yeah. awesome. awesome as well too well, yes you could pick up where the camera stops and all that but yeah. still making it seem like it's flowing uh, yeah. seamlessly it's, it's yeah, brilliant made it work. Yeah, yeah they made it work when it was bad. I thought it yeah. was really well done um, the stuff with the hand I actually like just from seeing ninjas get their ass kicked and you know it, it, it looks Again. good like flashy but at the same time it's a little too much yeah you know it's moments like okay My thing, another thing too is that yeah, stick, stick. Um, kind of tune it on a little uh, bit another thing is that stick shouldn't have even been in this season either I mean I felt super for us in my opinion um Again, because of yeah. the mystical mumbo jumbo. Yeah, I, I, I didn't mind it that much because it's like, hey, he's back, and yeah. we get a little more backstory with yeah. him. But still, it's like, and even like how he comes in the the, the last episode is like, right? Oh yeah, we forgot about stick. stick yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
yeah, not as good as season one, but ultimately no. it pre- still pretty good. And uh, yeah, it's gonna get a season three. I hope. Uh, here's my thing. I find with season two and there's a little mystical stuff. You could have bring in, bring in Iron Fist and have the Iron Fist stuff be in tandem with this. So Daredevil. Yeah, and Iron yeah, Fist. yeah. Right. So yeah, so yeah. You, you 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 you're bringing a whole new dimension. Into exactly. This, yeah. And uh, well, Madame Gao is a big villain in uh, Iron, Iron Fist. We see her in this one. Oh, okay, okay. I uh, never knew that. Yeah, right. So she, um, you know, we'll give her, she gets your props. Yeah, well, you have a nice part. She's pretty funny and clever, I thought. Yeah. I find um, she's kind of, uh, personally, I just find she's a little shoot and kind of shoehorn into this yeah, season. A little bit, yeah. 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 So that is about it. Yeah, yeah so, so that's their level season. Yeah, two. so for me, if I could just give a rating, I will, yeah. I will still give it a, I'll give it a light to decent four out of five stars. Right. Definitely check it out. You don't have to binge it, but it wouldn't hurt, you know. Yeah. Um, it's fun, it's entertaining, a lot of action, a lot of badassery in it. Yeah. Just that episode five I just put, he thought was just, you know, yeah. yawn, you know. But yeah. other than that, I had fun with the season. Yeah, I give it a, I give it a strong recommend as well. Um, go see it, go give it your time. It's on Netflix, you know, $8 a month or whatever. Yeah. And um, that's it. Do you see that's like a top 10 like best TV shows? Probably not. Not this year. Last year, Daredevil was definitely, yeah. but not this wrong. That do, uh, well, we'll see. I mean, yeah. we have some other shows to come. Maybe maybe for me, but it might be like, you know, between 6 and 10. I don't yeah. see it being like a top 5, right. like, honestly. That's not to say you shouldn't check it out, guys, but you know, yeah. Yeah. So, speaking of superheroes, yeah, you know, boy. meeting up with other superheroes and being in their own show and in their yeah. own world. <sighs> Now we're going to get into the moment of truth. Supergirl crossing over yeah, the Flash. Supergirl v. Flash. Nope. Dawn of Legends of uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah. Whatever you want to call it. Right. So, all right. So, basically, with, with this review here, it will be, uh, we're going to do our spoiler-free version, and then we're going to get to our spoiler-heavy version, where we just talk about stuff that of we Bat- that could have just been fixed, and, you know, yeah. what we liked and what we didn't like about it. Of Batman so, v. Yes, Superman. Batman v. Superman, Dawn, Dawn of, of Justice. Yes. Um, we took it in. Uh, Friday, Friday yeah. opening day, Good Friday. How yeah. convenient, you yeah. know, since Superman is now like the official Christ figure of um, of DC Comics yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. So, <sighs> all right. Before before you rip, before you get into it, um, let's just talk about like the history of Jesse Man of Steel. Yeah. Practice. Okay. No. Okay. So Man of Steel is a film I found myself um, actually defending. Um, it was a, also quite a controversial movie. A lot of critics didn't like it. Um, it got a notoriously low score for what it was expected, which was people was expecting it to be high, and it got a 55 on Rotten Tomatoes and a yeah. 55 on Metacritic, which is unusual, mm-hmm. having both similar scores. A lot of people saw it as a kind of agenda kind of thing, and you know people was kind of pissed off with it. And I found myself batting for, bat- for, for Man of Steel. I found myself defending Man of Steel. Um, I didn't think it was as bad. I, I definitely put it above... Superman Returns. Superman Returns, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I put it above Spider-Man 3, and yet both, both are considered lower scores in, you know, both are considered lower in on Rotten Tomatoes from, from those movies. Uh, but wait, but didn't Superman Returns, if I'm not mistaken, initially got a high score? I believe it got like yeah. about a 70 or something. Yeah, it, is still it, does. Is it still does. It still does, yeah. All right. So a, a lot of, that's baffling to a lot of fans, and it's like, no, Man of Steel was better. And I agree. I yeah. actually do defend Man of Steel over this. Yeah, um, I, I, I liked it as well, too. Yeah. Um, I wrote an actual like written review of Man of Steel. I actually gave it a three and a half out of five. Yeah. Um, I actually watched it uh, the week before seeing Batman v Superman, and yeah. I still hold on to that rating as well too. Yeah. It is. It is a decent movie. It is flawed, you know, especially with the narrative. And I, I had a little problem with the camera work. Yeah. You know, just that heavy shaky cam that they did like yeah. in the first third of the film. Yeah. Um, I thought the performances were great. I thought Henry Cavill was decent enough. Yeah. I love the music. I love the score from Hans Zimmer. It was just so bombastic and powerful, and yeah. just you know, and uh, it had know? some clever. I thought it had some workable and clever action in it. Um, yeah, I love the, the the fight scenes as yeah, well too. I just thought like the first time when I saw it, I was like taken aback a bit. I yeah, thought it was, it was just I, I too too spectacular. It was just too much. I, I was, much, I was you know? quite impressed with the, with, the, with the action in this, and yeah. I like a lot of the fighting. Um, it is really one one scene that impressed me is when uh, in the final fight with Zod, you get to see the, the camera in the. From the point of view of basically Superman's hands, yes, punching, and punching, and pow, and punch and pow. moving, and then you get the, the cameras moving, and you just like darting yeah. through the city. Love it. Yeah, but um, but I but I think one of the what well, I, I the reason behind the criticism behind the movie is because just the just one year before 2012, we got both the Avengers and the Dark Knight Rises, yeah. two movies that literally just pushed superhero movies to a whole new level. You know, yeah. like people didn't think, you know. Um, People didn't think a movie like The Avengers would have been possible. People wouldn't think that, you know, Nolan and his team could at, at least attempt to, to top what they did back in 2008 with um, 
with Dark the Dark Knight, Knight. Yeah. and for the most part it did you know I, I love the the, 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 new, um, the Dark Knight trilogy I loved it so you know when we heard that yes we're going to get Man of Steel we were like oh yeah. alright cool well you know we were so hyped up from what we saw with Dark Knight Rises we saw it it was like it was good I know a lot of people didn't like it you know because yeah. but, but my main, main 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 criticism with the movie is just in the character of uh, Clark Kent slash Superman you know normally with the older films you kind of connected with him on an emotional level you know you saw him you know help people out you saw him really risk his life because you know he was doing this for us not for humanity and then at the same time you could see him as a metaphor of you know he is who you know he, he, he's just like the, the figure the representative of who mankind can be right. if we push ourselves to that level we right. can you know be better than we can actually right. think we are you know I like so that. with him so with yeah. him and we how Henry played this character he felt more detached from everybody he was yeah. this loner he was all like I would go I would help you and then I would just fly away I wouldn't wait and you know I wouldn't hear any tanks I'm just flying out of here I'm gone you know so he just felt like, you know, emotionally detached from everybody. It's just like, not so much emo, but just like, all right, I'm this alien. I'm here to do this purpose. That's it. I don't, I'm not doing this for the praise or nothing. I'm not doing this to inspire anybody. I'm just doing this because I know deep down inside it's the right thing to do, I guess, because my dad told me so. Yeah. I have all this power, so yeah. But yeah. that's... Other than that, I, I enjoyed that yeah. movie. So. Uh, yeah, no, Man of Steel, well, Man of Steel's problem to me is that mostly, like, just little coherence is used. So, like, it's still not too clear on why it is that... They, 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 they had a terrible reason of why it is that you couldn't get the Kryptonians off of the planet. Um, many other people did a better job of explaining that, and a right. simple way to explain it. They didn't do it. Um, stuff like... Stuff like Jonathan Kent's death. Really yeah, stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really <laughs> silly. Really, really, really stupid. Dumb. Yeah, um, yeah, you kind of get it, but at the same time, like, dude. And then some of the plans you know? and the contrary reactions of, you know, the villains. Uh, that's what Man of Steel had. But Man of Steel still got a lot right for me. Um, of course. Again, I don't, I, I, it's, I understand its problems, but I didn't understand why it got such a bad score. And, yeah. then, about, and, and, and then the argument, too, is that, you know, after Super Mario 2 is around, but this is around the same time we, we were getting Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, the series. Yeah. People back in 2006 wanted to see Superman kick ass. They yeah. didn't want to see him deflect a bullet off of his eye. Right. And we got that. Yeah. You know, we wanted to see Superman beat the shit out of people. Well, not people, but all of his enemies. And we yeah. got that a lot. So I don't yeah. know, you know. And yeah, and again, with, with Man of Steel, again, you got a really political kind of thing with it. Because again, the movie, you know, again, in terms of tone and aesthetic, didn't really appeal to um, people in that way. They say, look, the Superman too dour, he too, too thing. Yeah, it was too um, dark and <clears> stuff, you know. Yeah, too dark and gritty. But again, I get a feeling that it more catered to the again, a Christian conservative audience, which is, it appealed to 9-11. It's a neocon Superman. Mm -hmm. That's what it felt like. It felt like that. It just... Yeah. Like, it's, and yeah, it's there, a were a lot of, there were a lot very, of, like, Christ iconography. Yeah, no, but very, two things, but very militaristic, very justification of violence kind of attitude. It's, it's you need to sin once to do it. That's why they did the whole neck-breaking thing, because he, yeah. he break his neck, but he's feeling so much regret over it, so you yeah. never have to do it again. And, and, you know, as you mentioned that, you know, I, <laughs> up to this day, like, I saw this scene, and I, I get I It's justified why he did but you know there's well, a lot of people like Superman doesn't kill right he's not supposed to do that right. why and they're, still, ah, they're still trying to do the whole rookie Superman and when many people make the rookie Superman argument which is fine for that first one um, the rookie as a, Superman <laughs> right uh, oh gosh I, well, anyway, yeah. I, th I think that they didn't um, tell a good story with, with respect to that because they could have come up with better reason if they need to have Zod die it didn't really work in that scene because you know, like he was using the lasers, he could have turned his head. Whatever. Yeah. Point is, um, more emotion. Right. That's the point. Lack anyway. of emotion, we don't get. Right. But anyway, I still defended it. I went to bat for it. I had no problem doing that. Yeah. So this movie. Well, well, we, well all right. We could. Uh, oh gosh. Um, yeah. I was thinking about you know we could just kind of mention the whole you know when we heard about when BVS was coming out right. and. Comic Con and the right. ads and all that stuff. I know. I've I've a, I've a double. I've a kind of uh, explanation for something like that because what. Because, no, I want to talk about it after. I want to talk about the film itself, and then we'll do. Okay. So I okay. Yeah. I just gonna straight up say it. This had this movie had a really bad edit. Um, that's the big downside of the movie. It had a bunch of ideas. It was rushed and it was rushed. It felt rushed in many ways, and then it was pulled in many directions. So this script just was a mess. You get a feeling that the studio, you know, pulled it in mul multiple directions, at least five, six different directions, and so you get multiple movies in one. Yeah. That was an incoherent mess as is. This theatrical release is a really, really bad edit. That was a big problem. Right. Just had some terrible editing. I mean, did Zack Snyder refused to do, these guys refused to do an establishment shot. 
Yeah, it, yeah no they, were, they, get, were, they were little to no established in shots in this yeah, movie. Yeah, I couldn't, like, like seriously, nothing was established. And then it had horrible characterization, with the exception of Batman. Horrible characterization it did. No, like, justification of why it is Alex Luthor is doing what he was doing. Not really. Yeah, exactly. It was so big and unclear. Um, yeah. Then the edit was a mess. Um, the action was good, but it's just, and I, I'll still say they got the Batman stuff right. Yeah. Um, and then they decided to bring things in that was just not needed. Um, so, most notably, Doomsday. Yeah. So, um, didn't need to be there. Um, Wonder Woman. I kind of understood why she was kind of there, but again, she didn't need to be there, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And then Lex, Lex's interpretation of that version of Lex just didn't work at all. It was everything that what we expected this thing to be. And again, when it was, since, since it was announced two, two years ago, here's what I think happened behind the scenes. We know for a fact, there's a kind of open secret in Hollywood that, that internal um, studios have a lot of internal politics. Mm-hmm. In, the, in the studios so what I feel happened is that everybody had to jump on, wanted to jump on the bandwagon of this film and what ended up happening is that the, everybody just have a bunch of ideas and they didn't want credit for them ideas so it, and that's what I suspect occurred the film just didn't it just all over the place all these ideas just pop into it and it's like nobody could have been sa- satisfied and it had no sense of control right so it was all over the place and it just didn't work for me the script didn't work the ideas didn't work it's just a bunch of you know a bunch of high fluting ideas that is and that's a dialogue and thing and just trying to be self important and self aggrandizing. And you know, a lot of theological ideas and concepts and I just couldn't take that stuff seriously. Mm. And it did not work. This movie was a mess when it comes to edit. It right. totally deserves and again when I was seeing all the bad bad reviews, I was again I was expecting it, oh it's gonna be a man of steel all over again. Same problems, right? So I'm gonna bat for it the same way. Nope. Critics are right. I'm sorry. I am on the side of the critics almost entirely for this. All of the arguments that the the Put forward, which is it's just a mess and it just just disappointing, right? I cannot defend this movie in any good good um, conscience. It had stuff I liked. Don't get me wrong. I thought they got Batman right. Thought they got it right. But this, nah, boy. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, good opinions. Lots of lots of stuff that I understand and agree with. So before I get into my two cents, before I offer my two cents with any film. I'll just give like a brief rundown of what it's about, even though you could just look at any one of the three trailers or you could watch all three trailers and more or less get the gist of the whole story, which unfortunately is the truth. So um, basically, it, basically the, the movie begins about a year and a half or so after the events of the, you know, the final fight between Superman and Zod in Man of Steel. Yeah. A lot of um, buildings were destroyed in the firefight. Mm. Um, a satellite was destroyed as well, too, which oh, you know, caused different, you know, caused dif- um, buildings to be destroyed. One of which was a tower, was a, a wind tower, yeah, wind tower, and wind satellite, yeah, and wind satellite, yeah, yeah. So during the moment of that actual fight, we see um, we see Bruce Wayne there, you know, played by Ben Affleck, mm. and you know he's seen this destruction and damage, and then you know he of of course, he blames Superman for this. Well, at least he, he knows that he was part of this, which is true, you know. So, in a way, right there, you kind of understand, okay, this guy clearly does not trust Superman because yeah. of that. You know, it's justified there. And Superman now, well, he's trying to ride this whole responsibility of just being there to save people. You know, he, he's not just concentrating on Metropolis anymore. You know, he's going out to different areas in the world and, you know, saving people there. And, you know, at the one hand, people are seeing him as this, as a savior, you know, come to earth to, you know, to save humanity. And on the other hand, some people just don't trust him. You know, why is this alien coming down to earth? Yeah. Why is he doing all these things? Should all we powerful, trust him? Yeah. All powerful. He could be a threat as we, could, as we more or less got a, repres- um, a demonstration of in Man of Steel. Yeah. So there's that little back and forth there. And cool. And then we have Lex Luthor. And I would admit his motivations weren't really clear justified. They weren't clear. He basically just wanted to take... Like, like, he, like he, 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 took the, um, he took the body of Zod. Because, of course, Zod died. Of course, he got his neck snapped. And he got access into the same ship that he used during the fight Mm -hmm. and he has some plan but you're not exactly sure what it's about but you know at the end of it all doomsday emerges out of it you know it's in the trailer come on i'm not spoiling anything so to make a long story short the movie tries so hard to really just to to try to come with that with a plan to really get superman to fight batman and they do fight, and it looks good, for the most part. 
my thing is just that it doesn't last that long. I, I'm not expecting like a whole ten minute fight, but you know because you're trying to concentrate on two characters and you, you don't really care that much about what's going on. You're just kind of watching it for the sake of watching it. When you actually do fight and it's really for like the for like this really implausible reason, it's kind of like well, yeah, they're fighting. Okay, well that was in the, the trailer. Okay, that was in the title. All right, cool. We seen it there. But now you had to have a reason why they stop fighting. And they give you that reason. And, you know, it's it just happens. And then, lo and behold, Doomsday shows up. And then Wonder Woman appears. And it's not like she was just... She just shows up out of the blue. She show, she, she's not there like, you know... She wasn't there before in costume. She was just there as... Well, more like an aide, more or less to Lex Luthor. She was just there in the background. And she had her own little agenda as well, too, which was really stupid. But I'll get to that in the, the spoiler-heavy um, review. And, you know, just to make a long story short, now we have Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman facing off against Doomsday, and I'm not going to see what happens in the end. So, yes, there are, there are going to be a lot of people that will love this film. There are going to be a lot of people who hate this film. People who will love it, they will just be like, you know, yes, this is our dream come true. We get to see Superman and Batman on the big screen. Batman, um, and wait, on the subject of Batman, Ben Affleck is fantastic as Batman. He's the best thing about this movie, hands down. Yeah. Although I still have a soft spot no, for, yeah, for Christian Bale. I like oh, his no, take my, on Batman, no, but the, as no, an older, grizzier, no, yeah, more no, but this Batman, hand Batman. You mean, you mean point about this yeah. Batman is that he's moving right. That is the important part. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was a more experienced Batman. He, was, he just didn't give a shit. He just went in the way I do. And yes, there are moments where he does kill people. <laughs> and I know it, that characterization of Batman got a little bit of controversy. You know, not too much, but just like, oh, Batman doesn't kill but you know, this is not Dark Knight, and God forbid, this is not Batman Returns or you know the older Batman's anymore. This is yeah. something new. This is a much older version of him, and I love that. Um, Henry Cavill was serviceable as Clark Kent slash Superman. He didn't really do that much. He didn't really stand out that much to me. You know, he did what he's supposed to do, but really, Ben Affleck seals his show. You know, he's the better actor, and you know, there's this moment where you see. That back and forth between Clark Kent and um, and Bruce Wayne, and you can literally see it on screen, dude. Ben Affleck is way better an actor than than Henry Cavill. You literally see oh, no, it yeah, like yeah, on yeah, screen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's blatantly apparent, you know. Right. Um, what else? It, uh, my my thing is with with Lex Luthor. This portrayal of Lex Luthor, personally, I didn't like it. I, I I felt it didn't, it didn't work. work. It did not work at all. Yeah. At first, I was thinking. No, here's my thing. Right, huh? Yeah. You your your take on him yeah, first. Here's my thing. Lex. Well, okay. I was going to make again another the old stupid joke on the internet. At least he didn't steal forty cakes in this video. In this oh movie. yeah, I remember you mentioned that yeah, before. Yeah, the old forty year. cakes joke. Anyway, no, but this Lex, I get what he was trying to go with. Look, but they have him more playing this kind of spastic Lex, and, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I didn't get why they were trying to do that. Like, I, I kind of understand, but it didn't work. My thing with Lex is that I get he's supposed to be jealous of Superman, blah blah blah. He has one of the biggest problems with this movie. If I was not a comic book fan. I want to be able to make heads or tails of this. I only because I knew what to look for. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I understand this. I understand why this is here, so on. So, but that is because and not. And here's the worst part: it's not that I had to rely on it. You know, it's not that it. I had to use it as a, not that I had to use it as a, um, as a reference point to understand what movie. I had to depend on my previous comic book knowledge to make sense of this movie. Right? And it shouldn't have to. You should, it I shouldn't, shouldn't, I shouldn't have, have to. to be, I, had, I shouldn't have to even touch upon it. I have to be, look, if you're completely ignorant of it, you should still be able to jump into this and make sense of this. Yeah. The edit, it, I'll, I'll not, I'll stress, you cannot I'll, I'll stress enough. I'll just so as well too. You yeah. cannot stress enough how important that edit is to a movie. Right? And that's the problem with this damn movie. I really get the feeling that I was, I, I, I paid for like a second draft um, test screening. Mm-hmm. That's what it felt like. It didn't feel like, a, this did not feel complete. This is an incomplete product. Yeah, right? and, and I'll, no I'll mention the whole them. complete thing in a bit. But yeah, yeah. yeah. but back to, to Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah. Yes, he's a good actor. I, I have no no qualms with him, no problems with him. You know, he was great in Social Network, um, no, you know, should, movies they have, like that. They should have Jesse Eisenberg play Jimmy, Jimmy Olsen or something, Jared. I agree. You like, know, he, he is, he's just work at all, not Jared. Lex Luthor. Yeah, and, you know, people all. will argue, you know, Gene Hackman's character and, you know, he, was, he wasn't, you know, that evil he was more kind of comical you know he was always talking you know talking shit to his um his uh his crony whatever like that you know and you know they try to replicate that with kevin species performance in superman returns uh, you know for better or for worse yeah so 
I guess people were kind of expecting Lex Luthor to be kind of a little comical, but not, not it spastic. Not <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work at no, all. No, 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 no. That's not uh, how he's supposed thing, to be. Thing, he's not threatening My that thing way. with Lex Luthor is that he's supposed to be charismatic. And my thing I wanted, if you're going to do, you want to do the dark, serious business Lex Luthor, please give us a dark, serious business Lex Luthor. Come on. Yeah. Like, I don't know if they were trying to go for like this, this young genius who just flipped and just went a little crazy. I, maybe that's the idea what they're going for, but I didn't see that. I just saw this good actor yeah. trying hard to play this character because the script required him to act this way, yeah. you know? So, yes, when he's spazzing out and things, it's not really all that funny, you know? When he's delivering certain lines, not it's, kind of, it's not that funny at it all. Didn't it didn't they didn't had, like, they just have him as a kind of mean-spirited sociopath, essentially. Exactly. So, like, they have this scene, uh, is, it a, uh, is it a spoiler, kind of, involving grandma sweet tea. Oh yes, and yes, I just yes. and I like like really this is so dumb, Jordan. Like, yeah, I I didn't get, I, yeah. I didn't get. No, I and even it. when you saw the reveal no, of it, like, no, I got it. I got okay. what the joke was, yeah. like because she mentioned it earlier. Right, the character, character mentioned mentions the thing earlier. It's like, oh, that's what you're gonna do with it. It basically, uh, do I want to spoil this? Nah, no, 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 we could we could spoil it in the, in the well, other half. Right, well, right. right. Yeah. So this, yeah. this, so, I, I just had, I just had a sort of the edit was a mess. I mean, it was just. <sighs> yeah, but 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 it was that, just that, it just it me. Okay, yeah. so I, have a, I, just, right. I had some little like typey notes quickly. Basically, it was an incoherent and tonal mess. That is my thing. It, it just tonal, yes. That's it was just yeah. back and forth. You didn't flow with it. I couldn't enjoy this. Yeah, I was just this was just a dull slog. And again, because of how unprofessional this edit was, the edit was. And you know, like I, I didn't back the whole thing. You know, and like it was this real professional editor. Of like, course, you know, like yeah, ASE. You yeah, know that that ASE. Of course. Yeah, so like, well, okay. yeah, but okay, that, but, but it's, you didn't see it. Yeah, and there's a different. Here's the thing: it's a different editor from Man of Steel, you know. So the I know, I know that. And I was watching this, and like, all oh, this serious, like, it was somebody edit worse. How yeah. is the edit so bad? And this is beyond me. Like, even the editing in Man of Steel was was well, just a cut to edit and was was bearable, you know. Right. It was just this back and forth, to, you know, flashback scenes and all that. Right, but, but it you got it. You understood because the story was flowing yeah. at this linear pace. Yeah, this but let me let me just wrap up characters and acting and stuff. Um. Gal Gadot was pretty decent as yeah, Wonder fine. Woman. She, she was, was impressive. She was fine. Yeah, I thought that the, she wasn't going to be given that much to do, let alone say, but, you know, she has some lines of dialogue here and there, and, you know, when she comes through as Wonder Woman, she's really badass. Her entrance is awesome as well, too. Yeah. And, yeah, she does get to throw down as well. That was cool. I just find that, just for me, her character was just thrown in. She didn't need to be in this movie, to be perfectly honest. She didn't True. need to be. I agree. Right. Um, but basically, every actor, even right down to Jeremy Irons, brought the A-game, you know, Holly Hunter as well too, brought her A-game as yeah. well too. It's just, Jesse Eisenberg was just a weak link. Yeah, he was I'm not Holly. blaming his acting, it's just, yeah, this is the character we want you to play, play him like yeah, that. And work. he didn't need to play him like that. Yeah, it Honest didn't work. It, didn't yeah. work. it really didn't work. And my attitude is that, I, I, you know, here's the, you know the sad part again, I was willing to give these people the benefit of the doubt. Don't, don't, don't say edit, <laughs> because I mentioned edit one, two, no, not, three. Not the edit, but it's like, okay, so you're going with, you're going with the younger uh, uh, Lex Luthor. Yeah. That is a very bold move, eh? Because usually, Lex Luthor is older than Clark. Yes. But yeah, Clark in this universe now is apparently, what, 34, 35 or something like that. He's pretty damn old, actually. Yeah, because um, the last one, he was 33, Three, you know, uh, because he's Christ. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, right. Um, in this now, they decide to say, all right, we have a younger, clearly a younger, just, um, sorry, clearly a younger Lex Luthor. Interesting choice. You could make that work. This movie d- didn't make it work at all. Yeah. It just and annoying. you know, they could have played off like, oh, yeah, younger than you, but are we smarter than you? Right, no, ah. yeah, that, that's the old point. He's clever yeah. and he's supposed to be this. I get it, but yeah. it's just so much nonsense now. And it did, because the script didn't make sense and it was all over the damn place, it didn't make any, like, it didn't work and yeah, go back yeah. and forth and it didn't work. Right, well, I, I will, all right, so <laughs> let, me, let me get into script. So, yes, the script was just all over the place. Yeah. The people could argue as much as they want to. It's a Batman movie. No, it's a Superman movie. And in a way, it's more of a Batman movie than a Superman movie. Batman is really, like, it starts off as the main focus. He actually, the, the movie actually starts off on his perspective. And then you have Superman just there, you know. You know, and they just try to, to share that time as well, too. Yeah. But, you know, just the way how it, it's, it's editing. You know, the editing is poor as well. So, like, one moment, you have this really dark, brooding moment with, with, with Bruce. You know, the moments with Bruce and, and Alfred, you know, you know, and this whole thing about being Batman and, st- you know, still being Batman in this day and age when we have this God literally doing all these things, you know. Those were cool moments. And then you'll try to cut it with Superman 
trying to justify, you know, does he will really need Superman? And then at the same time, right. you want to bring in this whole subplot involving Lois Lane, you know, once again played by Amy, Amy Adams. She was good. But even no, she her, was, like, she uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't given much to I'll do. Dis- I actually I'll disagree with that. I thought she was terrible in this yeah. movie. Cause it, and she was written even worse than she was in Man of Steel. Yeah. No, Man I mean, Steel, no, she could act good. I'm not saying she's... Okay. Yeah, but I'm just saying... What she isn't given that much to do, you no, know. But what I, they gave her to do in this is so much nonsense. This really, and it just kind of takes away from the story. It's like this whole, like you know, it's just this really blatant interjection from what's going. On. It's like you're following Batman, Superman, and then all of a sudden you have this thing with with Lois Lane trying to uncover some kind of thing going on, and then you have you're bringing Lex, and then he's doing something as well too. It is this 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 constant back and forth, back and forth. And then once again. No establishing shots. So one moment we in the back cave. Next moment we in uh, apartment. I believe it was owned. I think it's um, maybe not Clark's, but Lewis's apartment. So yes, yeah. Lewis and Clark are a relationship, and they don't even delve into the relationship there because apparently they don't have time to develop nope. that. So when we see what happens during the end, Jump. you know, with them, it's just like, Cut. well, uh, okay, didn't feel that, but all right, rubbish. No, little to no emotion. Didn't care. I didn't care about it. Yeah, with that, with, with with the characters as well too. And then of course the story just jumping back and forth. And this is really and, not you know, sad, knowing where it's yeah, going. The sad part is that the sad part is that you know everybody did did the best to do material. Like good people like Jeremy Irons. Yeah, solid. He was, he was Alfred. A great Alfred. Solid damn Alfred. Really good. You know they yeah. did, they did a lot of great jokes about him just ribbing on on Bruce Wayne of being just kind of pathetic. And he, yeah. they did a, a lot of great character moments with yeah. that. Like, I, 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 what I like with Alfred to compare to Michael Keane. Michael Keane was more of the father figure. Right. And you saw that, you understood, because no, of the deaths of the, of the parents. But in this case, it's like, yeah, I know. You, we went through this before, Jared. You still want to go through this? Dude, yeah. you're getting older. Come yeah, on. exactly. Stop it. <laughs> right. And I, I love that. And, you know, he kind of keep kind of insulting and showing how ridiculous the concept of the Batman is. All right, spoiler territory now, because I'm getting tired and again annoyed. Uh, and I, really don't know, I really don't care about this movie. Like, <laughs> I want to I wanna go, as, go, go as far as saying, you know, um, spoiler, fuck you, but... All right. Uh, no. Attention, folks. We're getting into the spoiler territory. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we see we see um, Alfred uh, kind of constantly reference Batman's life, and he said, "Look, the Batman, the Batman didn't figure out. He kind of beat up on a bunch of criminals and didn't figure it out. But Bruce Wayne could get information because he's invited to Lex's party to thing, and he ended up doing and just better. so convenient. Ah, he gets he, an but invitation. He, he do, but he does more. No, but that's the old point. He, he just kind of embarrassed the idea of the Batman in the, in the old age you now. Oh yes, the yes, idea yes. of the Batman is uh, uh, getting to be su- superbly ridiculous." And he should start to live as Bruce now. So little simple things. It's a little simple character moments with Alfred that I like, which is little simple things like little side comments when he said, um, go, you know, y- you should, um, I really hope that the future G- Wayne generations don't have to in- in- inherit a wine cellar, right? And that's assuming that we even get future generations, meaning that Bruce Wayne is showing no signs of even caring about having children. Yeah. Or he, he made another line that I loved, which is saying, um, you know, go get some woman in Metropolis to make you honest. And it's like, in your dreams, Alfred. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Love it. This is what you're supposed to be doing with Batman and Alfred in the old age. Mm-hmm. It's just Bruce and his pathological hang-ups. He can't get over. They do that good. And then he's focusing on, on Superman now. And he needs to get rid of Superman. He want to take the, 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 the white. He'd have a whole investigation with this ship. And you have to follow. Again, shitty editing. So it was very yeah. difficult to follow. But basically, Lex Luthor, was, he got kryptonite. Yeah, he he found it from one of the one of the terraforming right. devices right. from um, and then the first he, movie. He yeah. ran. What happens is that he was now chasing down the kryptonite to go get it, and then someone interrupts him, and he takes. He says, you know, he, you know, don't go back to your, don't go back to your, your, when the, the light in the sky. The bat is dead. Bury it. And yeah, like, and uh, and do and like, then tell me, and then the people voice like, tell me, do you bleed? You know. Yeah, he just flies off. Flies off, and he's like, you will. And you he's will. Like, okay, cool. Then they cut okay. to what they cut to boy. They cut to another part. It was really shittily edited, but they cut basically. They instantly like transported to Lex. Lex being the thing being stolen, not Lex. So he all that action with the car didn't didn't matter. But yeah. then he stole it later. So we didn't even see that. Why didn't we see that scene of him going to Lex Corp and stealing the stealing the thing? We don't know. Yeah, I I, I hopefully, don't know. I don't hopefully know. we'll see that in the in the in the, the, uh, the Zack Snyder cut. Yes. Whatever. Yeah. Um. I was gonna say wait. Um. Oh yes. And then we have well. Still in spoiler territory, guys. So, the thing that really turned me off, though, was how they tried to bring in the Justice League. Yeah. Rushed bullshit. Wow. Pointless rushed bullshit. you telling me in this... <laughs> Bruce... Mess. All right, so there's this whole subplot. Thing. Yeah, yeah, this movie is just a ton of subplots. Let me say it. So, 
Bruce is trying to to, to get some information, right? right. He's he's, he took, he's yeah. He, he's he took a hard drive. He, he took, took a hard drive, right? right. So one woman realizes that he took it, and yeah, and it was she like, could she can access it. Yeah. So she gave it back to him. Right. So she, the point is that one woman wants it back because there's some picture. There's right. a picture. Old picture. Old picture for 1916. We see yeah. her and some other people. You oh, see Chris Pine in it yeah, as well. Yeah, Pine. Yeah. Because little, that's all leading up to the Wonder Woman movie, and I'll yeah. get to the Wonder Woman movie in a bit too. We saw a little piece of it. Um, during the CW special of the uh, right, Justice League, that. it looked really good. Yeah. Um, but before we get right, so there's this moment that I I was in the cinema. I literally at, at the end of the sequence, I was like, "What the fuck?" Mm. Literally, ball it out. Mm. So Bruce is decrypting the information, right? It's taken as good. Why we see it yeah. like at one percent is going down, right? So yeah, yeah. Then, they established that it's moving very slow. So right, you, right. Yes, no. Here's a okay. You say what's going on, and then I'll explain how to simply fix up a simple fucking edit. Right, Go ahead. Right. So, before that, we had about a couple flashback scenes. Mm. First one, which opens the film, really brilliant in terms of Zack Snyder slow mo, okay. you know, visually stylized shots, where we saw, you know, Thomas and Martha's Wayne's deaths. You know, yep. same thing as before. They leave in the theater. Well, you know, a. a, a ha- uh, you know, going back to the original comic book, not the way how it was done in Nolan, which was an opera and all that kind of stuff. So forget that. And, you know, you know, we see in flashbacks and we get that. Okay, this is why Bruce is Batman. This is what he's holding on to. Okay. Yes, there was a moment in the first flashback where you see the, the, the bats surrounding him and then he levitates. Right. Good. Okay, all I understand that. Metaphorical. Okay, We're, again, it's a dream. Fine. All I get it. Fine. Right. No, 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 so now we complete. get into this big dream now where he imagines himself in the near future. Is this more this desert area? Yeah. I assume there was the same spot that Superman was in before. I, I could be wrong, but I I, that's why I assume. Whatever. And we've seen all these kind of like flying alien stuff. We saw it in right. the trailer. We saw brief right. glimpses of it. So we in see explosions the of that we assume is, no, is all dark side. It's all leading up to dark side. Right. All right. So. Batman's doing his thing, beating up guys. He has his team. His team gets cornered by Superman, yeah. uh, by, by this military yeah, they get group. Yeah, they kind of get ambushed and betrayed. Yeah. yeah. So cool. All that's going on. Superman comes in. He fries the, the, the um, um, Batman's team. Yeah. And he's about to, to kill. Um, well, he doesn't kill uh, Batman. He just lifts up his mask. Yeah. Mask we see. Ben Affleck's face, blah, blah, blah. And then we just cut to this moment where... We see this guy. Where we see this guy coming out of a portal and, you know... Telling um, him about Lewis. How yeah, Lewis, you know, to Lewis needs to live. I know right there instantly because I'm a fan of, um, of, of Flash. I just put two and two together and realized, oh shit, it's is he Flash? Right. And then... Clark, we uh, sorry, and then Bruce, Bruce, Bruce wakes up, and I well, what the fuck was yeah. that? Because I and mean, it's such a no. Yeah, here's the problem. Right, so now you could get to how you could have fixed it. Simple fucking edit. The thing is, they show the screen, and then the screen it just cut to black. And I was like, why do you even do that? All they have to do, all they have to do, is just have Batman rock back in his recliner. You see him rock back and close his eyes. That's it. So yeah. you get that he dreaming. Yeah. And if it, and here's what you could say. You could say that Flash come back in the past and it affect his dreams or something like a mind transport something. No. But that that's all makes, you had to do. But even still, that no, makes no sense. No, again, if I was not a fan <laughs> of the comics and I know that I'm familiar with Injustice, I know that Flash goes back in time in one of the narratives to help out, to, to ask somebody from the, future, from the past to help out in the current future involving a, a tyrannical Superman. I'm familiar with that. That's in the comics or Injustice storytelling. I had to know that as a fan. That okay. is, like, again, horribly told. No, yeah, exactly. And what I think would have worked is if, all right, instead of establishing this whole thing as a dream, right? Yeah. Have it that, yes, Bruce is sleeping, you know, he's he knocked out, he's tired. Right. And then you see the moment where Flash comes through. Or something, And yeah. he says what he says. Right. And then you see just brief flashes of, okay, this is what's going to happen in the future. Yeah. Superman is going to be... A problem. A problem. Yeah, he's going to be a tyrant, more or less. Right. This is what the future could be if yeah. you don't, if you, you don't him, do and something. And you show him like a hologram thing or something yeah. like that. And this is what it, and it, it give him a realistic scenario. No? Yeah, just brief did, flashes, did not this elaborate yeah. sequence. Did you just shut a shit yeah. double that? Eh? And, yeah. and, 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 but this is the moment that had me cracking up, Jed. It's where as soon as, Cla- as soon as, why I keep calling him Clark? As soon as Bruce wakes up, oh, the encryption is at 99%, but yeah. 100%. I was like, yeah. dude, really? Don't, so you tell me this whole thing is just to 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 to, to, lead, to just to make up for that time this yeah. this this thing is being decrypted? Yeah. No. Rubbish. No, 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 no. Rubbish. Hell no. No, this this didn't work at all. Everything about yeah. I mean a whole heap of mess. Here's the thing, another thing too. Um so the main script 
so the main fight with Batman and Superman itself, the titular fight. Yes. It didn't last long. I didn't hate this fight. Actually, I didn't hate it either. I thought, I thought, I thought it, it, it looked fine. very good. I love the yeah. music as well too. Um, cool. Oh yes, speaking of music as well too, um, Hans Zimmer right, Junkie and XL. Junkie XL, cool. great. You know, solid. Junkie XL always brings the thunder and he always brings this kind of thunderous score. So right, you know, I love what he did with Batman's side of music. All I love fine. that. Cool. All that's fine. Cool. Anyway, they get into the fight itself. So Batman's preparation for the fight is the most silly thing ever. He basically does a Rocky Four montage. And it was just so silly. Yeah, and, you know, he pulled this big time. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, big sledgehammer. Yeah, and he had to, he, 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 he had to, he had to, you know, do the Rocky Four montage. He had to do, you know, he had to, he had to get his, 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 you know, he um, his CrossFit training bra, yeah. you know, on, and he had to get back and lift weights, and you know, and then he had to make kryptonite weapons. Now again, he basically make a big caveman spear, which was so silly. Yeah. With, I was like, oh, let's serious with this? The, nothing about this makes sense. It was so dumb. And then to, to go back, I mean, okay, here's the game. Guys, we could go on and on about this. We could have so much mess and, and you know, this this web of nonsense that they have to go through because it's so much plot points. Well, like I say, web of nonsense. I'm yeah. just thinking Amazing Spider-Man 2. This right. whole movie is Amazing right, yeah. Spider-Man 2 all and, over again. Yes, and, and we, could, we could talk all about, about the plot with Lex Luthor and what he wanted to do. He set up this bomb and kill Scoot McNary's character. Yeah, I'll, 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 I will get to that Dude, in a bit. I don't know yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. It was... Just yeah. piss him off about what he decided to do with this. And the Titular fight itself worked for the most part. And then this is the, the part of the movie that didn't work at all. They take they took a basic piece of comic trivia that we kinda was familiar with and me, decided to make that a big plot device, which is Clark and Bruce's mother has the same full name. Yeah. And I was like, Are you serious with this rubbish, Strad? And this, this is, is the reason so why stupid. The, but but this is what pissed me off though, is how the fight develops though. So, Lex, through the help of some guy, I forget his name, one of the guys yeah. who was dealing up with, you know, stealing crypto and whatnot, kidnaps Martha, um, Kent. Kent. I was going to say Wayne, Wien, Martha Kent, Kent sorry. Kent. Yeah. And, all right, so there's this moment where Lex is on top of his building and, you know, uh, Superman comes to try and kick his ass. And this is right after, sorry, this is right after... Uh, Batman puts on the bat signal, so he's just kind of like waiting, just like dum di dum di dum, just waiting for bat for Superman to fly in, so I could kick his. Just waiting, dum di dum di dum. So meanwhile, Lex is giving his monologue to uh, to Superman, and then Lex shows Superman some pictures. And one of the pictures, he mentions witchness, so like basically he's a demon, so he mothers a witch or whatever like that. And then he shows her this, she shows him this picture of his mom. She looks kind of beaten up, mm-hmm. and you see the word witch written on her forehead. Now, anybody will see that and assume, wait now. So these, these bastards so, so, so messed up, so fucked up that they just, you know, um, took this knife and just wrote witch on her head. You know, no, you know, that's, that's enough to get Clark pissed. We understand that. Cool. But then later on, spoiler, well, oh gosh, we still spoiler territory, sorry. When we see her, she's all just tied up. She, she doesn't even have the witch thing. Uh, so you're yeah. telling me. What they had enough time to frick to, to, to Photoshop the the fucking wood <laughs> witch yeah. on her forehead Dumb. just to get Clark so pissed off to just go and fight and Batman it, it was, who it, had it, nothing to do yeah, with was, the kidnapping. No, it was a convoluted choice. No, exactly. it was just it was just he has a problem again. And, 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 before, yeah, and, and, and the whole and this is Lex's schema. Yeah. Get Batman to kill get, get Superman so pissed off that you have to do what I say. Okay, I right. want you to no, kill right. Batman. The idea, the, idea was yeah. to, the idea was to discredit <laughs> Superman. The idea that you wanted to do was to quote-unquote discredit Superman. And that was the idea. Okay. But which was stupid. Which is dumb. I mean, just come stupid. on. And the whole, you're, you're doing bad and you're making people look bad. But here's the thing, shit face. The thing, the, 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 in, the, in, the, um, in the trials, they already do, did that. With him going in the, in the desert and interfering with thing in this kind of Benghazi-style stance. Yeah, style yes. That they did. That is, you already do that. So you have no argument to make about making the, the thing look good. Because it's not as if we, everybody in the world already likes Superman and Lex is the only person who doesn't like him. Exactly. So your character, your character motivation don't make any sense whatsoever. Yeah. And you know, this is what I hate about, the, about this movie, you know. This movie has recursive failure when it comes to storytelling. Not only they make bad ideas, but even um, on the level of the bad ideas, they fail in terms of the storytelling. So yeah. even by the shitty logic, it don't make any sense. Yeah. Even by that. And I even right down to that, that, that picture, like I said, this is a simple yeah. thing. A picture, simple a thing. picture. Witch on a forehead. Simple Ah, thing. you're mad. Now you, you want to you right. kill Lex. But wait, no, before you kill Lex, 
kill kill Batman for me. Right. That and, that's your reasoning yeah, to no, but, kill Batman. I know, but no. I know. I guess yeah. the, the, again, the idea is that well, Lex, you can't kill me because I, I, the guys didn't tell me where they are. But because Batman's doing the investigation, Batman is the one who figured it out because the guy's cell phone that he hacked earlier. Again, my brain had to go into overdrive to connect this nonsense. Drew. This was just nonsense. Yeah. I just was hating about this. It's like I could not follow the story. It, right. it was very, very po- poorly done. Yeah. Watching it a second time, it made some more sense. It's like, all right, okay, I kind of piecing together this. This was rubbish for me, though. Yeah, but 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 all right. So uh, another thing that that took me off, that that took me away from. It, I think I mentioned it before, before we, I think before we got into uh, spoiler territory, was the whole inclusion of the Justice League um, thing. Rubbish. Um, so right, so. <laughs> No, I like the fact that we're talking about spoilers and we forgot yeah, ahead, the spoilers yeah. that we mentioned yeah. before. So, right. right. So, I didn't finish up this spoiler. So, right. So, after the whole decryption thing, Bruce realizes, Bruce sees the picture of Wonder Woman, you know, in 960 and stuff. He puts two or two together, two or two together realizes, oh, so Lex's assistant is not who she says he is, not who she that appears to be. Lex's assistant. Uh, that is, there's another person. They had Mercy in this. Mercy is Lex's assistant. All right. So it's not like no, I was co- all right. So I was like, no, I was confusing Mercy with with Wonder Woman. No. Okay, Mercy, Mercy was in this, and she, Mercy died by the way. I noticed they like to kill big side characters in this. No, that's a where where did when did she die? Who Mercy? Yeah, in the bomb. Remember, she oh, was in, right, in she the was cap, in the room. Okay, in the room, and then Lex didn't show up, and then the, the thing blew up. All right, Here's all right. Well, I was getting confused. Here's so right, thing. Mercy was there. I cool. noticed that they like to keep doing this. They like to kill big side characters in in this. You know, they kill like three big side characters already. They kill Hamilton, who's like a big character in, in as a big side character in man superman yeah, yeah he's star labs when he had a star labs any time and you know um i forget the name of the other labs in in metropolis mm-hmm. he's the head of that he's also part of cadmus and so on so then they kill um what's his name boy cat guardian that was chris Maloney's character right big character in dc big side character big, very big character they kill him off he dead he going to the portal and the whole ship oh right, so, right, right i mean you don't have to necessarily be dead but Seriously. Yeah, and then, and then we have Mercy here. Yeah, and then they kill Mercy. It's like, oh, they kill Mercy. Mercy's a big character. Although this Mercy looking like just annoying Mercy. Like, the Mercy in, from the animated series. By the way, she was invented for the animated series. Mm. That Mercy was a great character. This Mercy, rubbish. She just did. Yeah, just she a, just did. Just a skinny, just skinny, skinny, skinny Asian girl to look yeah. pretty. I think that's the reason why. Right, right. She, right, she was the Asian girl. Right, yeah. I forgot. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, let me just wrap up the whole, <laughs> this just a little thing. So, basically, later on, before the big titular fight... Bruce sends Mrs. Sorry, Miss Wonder Woman an email. Yeah. The email basically ha- like say yeah, like she, no he blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah 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 blah. Basically, 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 Wonder Woman got a press kit for the next set of movies. Yes. So there's a big press kit. This freaking so shitty yeah, and this freaking video press kit. So yeah. Uh, but this is what gets me. First of all, you see in the logos of right. each character, right? Right. So you see in Wonder Woman, you see Cyborg, Aquaman, so. And in the video, you click, okay, you're seeing, you're seeing, you see a shot of Aquaman swimming, doing some shit. I don't right, know what he was doing. Right, right, so basically what it was, again, all of this made sense to me in the, in the context of it. It's just the global connection, connectivity is a mess. So basically... It's just what, it in the movie making what it was, Yeah, what it was, it was Lex Luthor basically tracking down these super beings. So it was Lex Luthor as the person. Here's a, another thing. This is notoriously similar to Max Land. This is pitch for Justice League. Eh? Uh-huh. Anyway, whatever. It's... It's basically that, um, basically it's just uh, him tracking them down and he uses this OS, this OS. So I t- everybody suspect that might be Brainiac because right. it's this artificial intelligent OS tracking faces and this kind of okay, stuff. Okay, okay, okay. So that might be the case. Um, well, point is, the, he tracking them down and then the, you get to introduce all these characters. So we get to see who are the four. Yeah, we get to see Flash. We, Flash, um, Aquaman. Aquaman, one, one Cyborg, and, and one Woman. Yeah, right. That's the four. And then, yeah. well, Superman, Batman, and that is a sixty century. Right. So, first question will come to anybody's mind. So, Lex is the one who's trying to set up a Justice League, and no, oh no, okay, I, okay. What what is what what, Le- what okay. do you see? What does this video exist for? Here's the problem. Yeah. Lex's motivation initially was making some sense, which is the the whole you know threat of the world problem. You know, you have super beings, they're dangerous. I want to track them down and control them. And he did that. Makes sense, yes. That was making sense. But however, it was established as not to be the case later on with the whole sweet tea thing. Now, she does, he does want power. Yeah. But they didn't explain. Uh, that, is why, that is why they didn't have a properly established him. They gave a bullshit establishment and then they didn't put that, they didn't explain it later. So that's why I say this character didn't have any proper establishment. Right. Lex, um, the whole idea was that they have a bunch of super beings out there and he wanted to deal with that. That's why he was following them. Okay. Was following Flash. Cool, cool. Following Cyborg. Following. Um, Aquaman and, and following, can I have evidence of these four now? Right. That's why he had, that's why he was doing what he was doing. Okay. 
Yes. Granted, understood, right. And it's just and how convenient it all looks like. Hey, yeah. guys, Justice League movie coming up. Yeah. Hey, Shush. there's a little sneak peek yeah. of what to expect. Ha <laughs> ha. Shitty, hey, shitty press Aquaman, kit. hey. Shitty press Cyborg. Kit. You know what I Come on, really? Lazy. Shitty press kit. Yeah. And it, it's just a, such a hype thing. Again, it's much like with Iron Man 2 or even Amazing Spider Man 2. It's just a hype thing. Yeah, the whole system. Just sex a hype. Bullshit, yeah. yeah, just pure bullshit hype. Yeah, and I think that's, that's the, pe- that's that's the, the reason why people like this film, why fans love it so much. Yeah. It's like. Boy, Aquaman, yeah. ah, going crazy. No, Dumb. it doesn't work with any story. It doesn't work. Now, that's a little sidetrack here. Now, what I think would have made the story a lot better, I remember we, we argued about this. Yeah, we, we argued about the show after we saw it. Mm-hmm. In IMAX, uh, people, mm-hmm. IMAX. Uh, yeah. You could have had a Man of Steel 2. Right. Right? This is what this is the, this is what we could have done with the, with the Man of Steel 2, right? Yeah. So, yes, Man of Steel 1, of course, is the origin. Duh. This one, you, you touch back on on Superman's relevance in the world. Is yeah. he a trek or is he um, you know, like, savior? And you make it Lex vs. Clark. Right, you can have a Lex vs. Clark. Most, at and most if Batman, you want... At most, Batman should just be Bruce Wayne in a meeting, shaking his hand. Yeah. Hello, if, Mr. Luthor. You yeah. shake your hand and you move on. And right. then everybody like, hey, that brand off. Like, cool. Right. So you, so you see Lex, you see, you see the whole animosity between Lex and him. You see how, you know, how they get end up not like each other. Cool. And if you want to, you could bring in Bruce Wayne. Yeah. You could bring in the reason why he doesn't like um, Superman. You could start it off the same way how this movie here starts off with, you know, the aftermath of the of the fight between Superman and Zod. Great. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to be a little bit more ambitious, you could have the titular fight between Batman and Superman end it off. Or if you want, you could just hint that it's coming up in either Man of Steel 3 or a Dawn of Justice movie or something like that. Whatever right. title, whatever choose it. And then after the fight, things happen and then, right. okay, Lex reveal his big plan, you know, with Doomsday and stuff. And we'll get to Doomsday in a bit. I have my, uh, I have something to say about that whole Doomsday thing. And right, then so bring in Wonder Woman, fight things right, anyway, so the end, and then right. so end. Doomsday, Doomsday and So you have three that. movies, well, you have two movies instead of one. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, the Doomsday part was just had me going, bruh, because it was just so silly so dumb and and what to do with it and then they decide to do one of the worst plot superman things in the 90s ever which was just a pure gimmicky story which is they decide to go with the death of superman and resurrection superman storyline in this oh my yeah. gosh they can't and be serious how they do it they can't sure. be fucking yeah, serious i was like okay no I was so, okay so yeah. this is why amy adams is like lois lane is a, a dummy batman <laughs> is a dummy clark is a dummy right three dummies Amy Adams, she take up the spear and throw it in the water, right? Just because, fuck you, the script right. so we Right, she throw it in the water because yeah. it's dangerous. All right, whatever. Cool. Batman said that the spear is needed again to come back and kill Doomsday because Doomsday is the, the Kryptonian. He said Kryptonian is dangerous. He think it's Kryptonian. He have a, and he has good evidence why Kryptonian because he was shooting laser beams, right? Yes. Good. So he have evidence. And he tell that to one woman. When did he tell this to Amy, Amy Adams? Never. Never. Never, right. For some good, for some no goddamn reason, she turned around now to jump into the water to get the spear. She didn't hear Batman say that shit. It didn't and connect. how she figure out that? Chopiness. No. Right, so it was just an incoherent edit. So she's a dummy. Here's why um, she's a dummy. Here's why Superman is a dummy now. Superman, here she's in trouble because do me a shockwave. Of course, she to get trapped in the water. She's yeah. drowning. He gone and save she. He gone down in the water like a dummy. To take the spear instead of just telling she hey take your breath and go and get the damn spear to come up and then you know he say well i need to take this spear and then fly into doomsday to <laughs> sacrifice myself and like fuck face idiot give woman one woman the damn spear she usually exactly to give. oh my gosh again you Maybe see what that the, batman but give it to one give woman. it to one woman come she on. used she cut off doomsday hand number 10 three times she cut you beating up on doomsday she doing damage oh god man and i was like all well, this serious with this? But you know this why? So because much, they want to wrap it back up no, to Spider Man. You know, uh, no, no, Superman. No, you know why? You know, they, you know why? Because it get pushed back. This movie get pushed back to be on damn Good Friday. That's why they need to do that bullshit. Oh, so yes, the Christ. Oh, God. Stupidness. Oh, God. Stupidness. <laughs> That's why I get the feeling with This is so much nonsense, right. eh? Nothing about that. And then, no. of course, of course, in the last scene, you know, Superman had to come back from the dead because you see the rocks start to raise off of Yeah, the, what he does. The, 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 the little yeah. sand. And like, are you serious with this? No, you know they're gonna do the laziest possible approach to this story with the death and resurrection of Superman. Resurrection of Superman, Return of Superman, one of the dumbest comics. The only thing that came I heard that. The only um, th- there's this great video, by the way, 
that that rips apart the whole death and resurrection of Superman. You horrible. should check it out. It's, it's, it's brilliant. Horrible. That's my son. This one. Anyway, yeah, but it's this guy who just talking about the whole think, history about yeah, it. We did it's, real it's, it's probably Max Anders. Yeah. Whatever. Right. Point is, it's, it was really stupid, forced, no reason. Listen, if you're doing a Donna Justice thing, all you have to do is just come up with a good threat, right? Come up with a good threat, and then the threat has to justify why it is that Superman need help. That's it, right? And you could come up with many threats. I thought having Doomsday come in this early and then you get rid of him, which is because he's such a shit character, yeah. was a good idea. Yeah. I was like, oh, they're going to bring Doomsday in early and then get rid of him so we have no Doomsday to deal with. And then you get into more interesting DC characters later on. Yeah, but, and, and well, right. And think about it. Like, let me just say you're ending the whole trilogy or anthology, whatever these Justice League movies could be. Bring in the biggest threat possible right. and have he be the one that Superman have to, you know, risk all to do, right. you know? And the kind only of, kind of how and Dark Knight Rises and, was, and where and he hello. risked his life. And, and hello, the only character that was supposed to be like that in this universe is supposed to be Darkseid. By the way, they did the laziest alliterations to Darkseid in this. Just constantly referencing the devil and, you know, the, the bell has rung and, you know, people are coming from space. It's like, well, you're talking about Darkseid or not? No, Avengers right. did it brilliantly. We saw fucking Thanos. Yes. You just see a head turn, Thanos. You know the big chin, we know what it looks like. All they had to do just show Dark Side, you know, Dark Side just have his hands behind his back. Yeah. And yeah. the big blue, you know, um oven mitt hands. Yeah. Just show that shit and you just just see some fire in the background in the distance and maybe a calabac with the hunchback in the corner somewhere. And that would have been the, the best way to end the, the movie. To end the movie, yeah. God boy, yeah. this was a but very frustrating. Here's movie, my right? thing with, with, with Doomsday. Now, remember the guy who was working at Wayne Tower, the one who broke his legs. Right. Scott McNary character. Right. Contrive, yeah. Contrivance number. <laughs> so, there was this moment. Oh, by right. the way, by the way yeah. I do recommend, there's a show that he stars in called Halt and Catch Fire. So, oh, this, yes. the, do not let this movie judge Scott McNary as a character. He just had shit to work with. Scott McNary is an excellent actor. Dude, he man saw cool. opportunity, took it, no, no, to no, get a paycheck, right? Yeah, a paycheck. <laughs> but, God, boy. Hey, whatever. Yeah, go yeah. to do. So, there's this moment where Mr. Man, who has a wheelchair, right. finds his way on, f- somehow gets to climb this, this monument right, that he built statue. for Superman, right? right? And spray paint, oh, and, oh, and this, this is where, spray paint this, is where this, is, this is one of the, the film's many instances of, of no logic, right? Yeah, right? So he's climbing on this thing, right? Remember, he has no, he, remember he, 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 lost his mobi- he, was, he lost his mobility, right? Right. To, to, mo- to walk. He is spray painting false god, right? right? Because he blames Superman, Superman for, for what happened, right? Losing his legs, yeah. Two cops see this guy climbing up this 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 monument. Right. It's like, hey, stop it, stop it. Right. We cut to a news report. Yeah. Oh, breaking news. This guy, his name is so so right. so 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 was, was, was caught arrested. How, how they spray painting false god. So how they are you telling me? He got he got arrested, eh? so how they reach already. So the, that, cam- the camera crew was there yeah, the entire so, time. So, so you're telling me that the two idiotic Dumbass fucking policeman just stood up there and watched him spray paint false god and then say, Oh, let's bring him down now. No, no, I get that. There was kind of, there was, no, well, again, it's, it's how it shoot. The problem is where the camera was to for them to see. Yeah, the that. way how it, it was done. Just done and <clears throat> no, no, I mean, edited. They, they, just they, they, they don't want to harm him. a guy with a wheelchair, so they're like, Hey, stop it. And they're trying yeah. to bring him down now. Right. And now, now, if he was like almost like, for me, if he had just was working on the word God or something like that. And the police found him like, oh, okay. No, then, no, I mean, I, okay, so but it'll be kind of hard to climb up and go after him, and you know, for again, I don't know because you can spread that stuff relatively fast, wherever. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, right, but 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 right. So, so get back to the character. So, uh, what he, he, find, he finds himself in Lex Corp, right? right? He wants to help Lex do something. Right. Yeah, really he wants to make make Superman look bad. Right. And, oh, no, by no. the way, this is so dumb and contrived because he was getting checks from Le- from Lo- from Wayne. He's my he's Wayne's employee. Yes. He's yes. getting checked, and he's sending back the checks again. It is not explained. Why it is that he hates Superman this much, you know, to not take the money from Wayne? Why did he not take the money? They didn't explain that didn't shit explain at that. all. Now, what I was thinking, right? Now, this is just me. Um, I think, I, know, I think maybe Guys, the, like, like the Spider-Man movies did it before. That's need, need all. to I, explain yeah. this to me yeah. because I did not follow that at all. Yeah, time. like I think the Spider-Man movies did, you know, f- similar stuff like this where you have this person or maybe Batman forever, I guess, you know, with Riddler, where you have this person who just generally does not like um, the the hero, and he will do what it takes to kind of get back at the hero, and you know he goes through some kind of experiment and things go wrong. Mm-hmm. So at first I'm thinking, wait, is he going to be doomsday? Who? 
like like um the the same guy with a new wheelchair. No, no, like I know no. that's all. Like I know I know it wasn't going to be him, but I thought no. maybe the movie would have make some kind of twist, no. some kind of surprise. The twist, and be like, the only, the only oh, twist, no, the only okay. Twist, the only twist in the story. Doomsday is an entirely a Kryptonian phenomenon. The only twist with a character like that is that if you're gonna make a character who could have been something like that, could have been Metallo, right? Metallo is a character who's like that, where he's a human who right. becomes a robot and then he's a more or less engineer to destroy Superman. Um, that's yeah. where you could have done it. And I thought a, a Metallo character would have fit in this better. Yeah, but, than but, but, but right. But I think the point is, is that with all this this emphasis on him and how he doesn't like this man and how he did all this and spray false God, he would have some kind of big relevance in the movie. Nope. Nope, he just, was just there, and we will, we will get to the whole trial scene. He was just there, a bomb went off. He's a bomb. Bye. Yeah, he's no, more, no more, None. no more of, of and this another guy. Thing no is more, that, he's gone. Another thing is that they waste that too, because you're thinking, oh, well, the idea is to frame up Superman and make him look bad in that scene. No, nope. Exactly. Right. Yeah, that's that's what I want to get no, to. No, the yeah. bomb was somebody else, and it's not Superman. Don't worry and about it. And then we cut. Right, the right. So, right. So, we have this. So, we had the trial scene, right? Superman comes in. People say what he had to say. He say what he had to say. And then we have the, well, go, just alluding to what Lex said before to um, Holly Hunter's character about the, well, what was the jam or well, tea? Tea. Yeah. Right. So and she's piss. looking at this thing. It was, it was piss, right? Yeah. Yes, it was a jar piss. Yes, guys, it was a jar piss. Yeah. So she's looking at this so thing stupid. and then she's like, wait. You could tell you've seen right. the tension. Eh? And even the tension itself wasn't really built that well. Yeah. Okay, let's see a stammering like, right. uh, Dumb. uh Dumb. I was, uh, uh, utterly pointless cool that you didn't have any music all right but the way how it just looked together cut it back to that and just her you know reaction didn't work you didn't see superman's reaction you didn't see anybody's reaction then lo and behold boom explosion yeah all right breaking news all that stuff big explosion you know there all right and then we cut to lex corp somebody broke in to lex corp and took the kryptonite they turned out to be batman and at first I think we wait now. Well, why are we cutting back to Lex yeah, Corp? What yeah. what 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 about the, the actual yeah. explosion? Dumb. It didn't follow. Yeah, it didn't follow at all, and then, you know? And then they're trying to spin it out as a well, wait. Lex wanted Batman to get the kryptonite, so why didn't you just give him the kryptonite? And I was like, he apparently I don't think you should have given him it, but still no, have give, a reason. No, give or, him or, the or unless you want Batman fact, to be the one to kill him. No, no, exactly. In fact, if you're Try making, to rope him you're, somehow. Thank you. Know? If you're making that case, have have let meet damn Batman direct. Like, yeah, I need to meet you. And they meet. So you get a sense of, wait, the Superman is such a threat now. So, and then Batman now realized, wait, Lex is a serious problem worse yeah. than Superman, and Superman actually is a good guy. They didn't do that shit. Dude. What did they decide to do was, uh, my mommy is the same name. Yeah. So, Dude, you know what I've been a great idea? The moment where Batman puts on his suit and he, 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 he puts on the bat signal, Lex should have flying with the helicopter. Something. Stop me. Tim is like, hey, Batman, I'm Lex Suter. We both hate Superman. Right. So you, no, but they, they could have you know, had, you know, had like, like, like chin up his head somehow, yeah. and then he could have given him the spear with the kryptonite, like, yo, use this, Convol- kill him. No, no, it's a convoluted mess. I, this wasn't, this didn't make any sense. I, the yeah. whole spear thing, dumb, and it, it not. No, it is, it is. And, is oh yeah, and we didn't even mention the whole kryptonite dust gas. Right, thing. so that's how basically. <laughs> but, uh, you don't need to get into it. Basically, a Batman made weapons out of the kryptonite. He used a little bit of it, and then he used the gas to weaken, thing. and then he yeah. used the last bullet to shoot. Um, Doomsday to weaken him for two seconds so Superman could stab him with his spear and get himself killed like a dummy yeah right dummies all together yeah. okay so just my last words uh, before I give my rating how they could fuck up a movie so badly this <laughs> this was a this was an incoherent and tonal mess you know I was willing to defend Man of Steel I was willing to defend this film seeing the, the ratings yeah I, I had shit ratings I was like wait I'm coming to defend and bat for this movie like I did with Man of Steel nope this movie the critics are right the edit was atrocious um all the ideas were rushed, lazy, and half-baked, taken from the comics in all the worst ways. Yeah. All of the worst ways. I just could not tolerate this nonsense. Yeah. Um, and here's the worst, one of the worst parts for me. It, it felt like it was really pandering to, to evangelical Christians and, and this kind of, this kind of, um, you know, conservative culture. I get it. I get why you do yeah, it. Yeah. And even it you know, like how they include this whole thing about God and the yeah, devil. Had, and yeah. It had a sort of especially stu- with Lex. Lex always yeah, keep it, talking yeah, about you know stu- devil and right. All and, that and, stuff. Again. If you, you could do this right, you know, if you know how to write it properly. Um, Lex is a straw atheist, essentially. Batman is like the, the, the lay believer that kind of gets cynical. You know, I don't really oh, trust yeah, Martin, yeah, but, yeah, I get And that, then I get Superman that. is the savior in doubt. Like, yes. I get that. I get it, you know. We get what he was trying to do, you know. It's just a fucking sloppy. Um, yeah. This movie was a mess. Uh, get to it, but... I got this yeah. out. Last night. Yeah, this, look. I was going to give this a complete F you. Um, but <laughs> the, action, the action was decent. 
Action was decent. I like what Batman did with Batman, especially that scene where he had to rescue Mata. Thought that was awesome. Uh, that fight alone. Yeah, that, that fight legit. alone. It re, it, it, I would it, say it's worth seeing in it, IMAX, but it is worth seeing on the big screen, guys. No, yeah, so it's in trailers. Um, so I think trailer, it looked like everybody started to say it looked like the Arkham games. Yep, looked like yeah. that. That was it. Um, it, had a few tra- it had a few gems sprinkled on the mountain of bullshit. Mm. And it was just a mess to me. And I really hope that we're going to talk about the future of the franchise. The future yeah, of yeah, the, I, like, I, yeah, I think we should end I, it off like my, that. My, the, the saving grace of this, hopefully, is I really hope this is a Kingdom of Heaven scenario. If you remember Kingdom of Heaven, the movie. Kingdom oh, Kingdom of, oh, okay. Yeah. No, I was thinking Kingdom Come for a no, second there. No, Kingdom, yeah. of Kingdom of Heaven. I know I'm yeah. really Scott. Right. Yeah. Kingdom of Heaven was, was most notable about this movie. The most famous thing about this movie is how bad the theatrical cut was. Yeah, and then and the director's then how cut very good come is, and just change everything. Yeah, yeah. how good the, the director's cut. I really hope we get in that. Given it's Zack Snyder, we're not sure. I am not sure. Right. And, and that scene too, because I, I mean, well, just going back to Watchmen, which... Right. I love, I think it's, it's probably Zack Snyder's best movie, probably right. his most underrated movie. I, I, uh, I always call it like the, his, his Blade Runner, you know, it's a movie right. that people didn't get, you know, the first time, you know, because they thought it was too sour and too dire and just too dark. Right. I could say the same thing about this one, right. but, you know, um, just the, the depth that was into the story, the characters and all that kind of right. stuff, and even just everything about it just worked. Yeah. In this case, with Batman v Superman, like, I don't know, like, um, uh, it's, it's, I don't know if it's just it was his, his comic book geek boy stuff that just manifests it's like you know maybe he just saw like you know two drafts of script and said you know what this is good you know but um, yeah. maybe we should add this and you know add this and add this and add this no, you could tell that. this was pulled in several different directions yeah it, it was, it was and it shows it yeah. shows it, you know, even if you want to shut your brain off and just enjoy it, you can't help but just see all these right. blatant tonal shifts so the second, and it just doesn't here's, work. Here's, here's the second saving grace. Let's assume that uh, the director's cut that comedy, three hours director's cut that comedy in what you July. You rated R. Right, he's rated R as well. Kiss come, my ass. Come, 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 in, come, in, come in in July, I think. Well, yeah, July. Let's assume it, it's not good. And it's j- almost as bad or just as bad as this, right? Uh, which I expected to. Right? That's what I expected to. The second saving grace is this, that if it's following, let's just use some, some logic, some induction, induction logic, logic of induction, and compare it to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is Iron Man 2. Yeah. Right? This is what Iron Man 2 is. And you can still, what I expect, Wonder, so the, the, this is Iron Man 2, Wonder Woman movie going to be a mix between Captain America and Thor, which are two fine movies, but not yeah. great. But not great, but... Two yeah. fine movies. I expect that Wonder Woman movie to be akin to Iron Man, sorry, akin to Captain America and Thor in one. Right. It's happening during World War One, not World War Two instead. And she has magical powers. She's right. basically female though. And right? then you could kind of lead up to um, well, right. I don't and know then, if you'll have any other movies year, prior to then, Justice League. But, no, and know. then next year is Justice League, right? So we get in. We have two movies to go. We have, okay. We have Suicide Squad coming later this year. One Woman coming next year, and then Justice League coming late next year. Yeah. So Justice League should be by that standard. Justice League should be as good as the first Avengers. Right. By this, Hopefully. By this, by this inductive reasoning. Yeah. That is the saving grace of this. So, guys, get your shit together. Sorry, DC, this was a mess. I yeah. hated this movie. It was a complete mess. Had a bunch of great ideas that just give it written. Give it written. Just yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm gonna go as far as saying that I might give this as low as a very, very low, probably borderline, probably a globe. I'm giving this a low globe, as in you don't need to spend your money on this. This might be a cap score. As in, oh, I might, that, that's 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 a defunct cinema, by right, the way, yeah. guys. Go go cap score. Go wins though. Go Palladium. Yeah. You know. All of which are defunct yeah, cinemas. Yeah, go yeah, go go those movies to see because this was some bullshit for me. Sorry. I this was a yeah. mess. And look, I'm waiting for the director's cut. My thing is that just skip this theatrical cut entirely and just wait for the director's cut. And watch that as a final product. Right. And as, I, I'm making the assumption that the director's cut is gonna be better or significantly better than this. Skip this theatrical yeah. version. It is you are pay- and I, I really get the feeling that I was paying paying for a second draft edit test screening. That is what I paid for. I did not pay for a movie. This is not finished. This is a yeah. mess. Sorry, mm. rubbish. All right. Well, for me, I it totally right. deserves yeah. the scores it gets. Like yes, <laughs> I, I I I I I didn't really walk out of it that pissed off like Ricardo did. He was really pissed off, guys. But I was I was very very disappointed by it. Um, and for me, it's just because they had so much potential. Yeah. With the story. But because it just really wanted to one up, it wasn't even one up. Fuck that. They just wanted to, to five up Marvel in every respect, mm. you know, especially with the Avengers and what they have done, you know, afterwards. You know, it's all like, well, yeah, we have to be so, you know, we have to be bigger and better and do all these things. And 
it's just literally an example of you know just using a, a Easter analogy. You know, taking all the Easter eggs and putting it in one, one basket. basket. Wow, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that's exactly what wow, it is. Like just the whole the... Good Friday release. Yeah. Well, when we saw it, you know, yeah. it's 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 so apparent. You really wanted to just take all these things, all these ideas that you could have just easily spread apart into three or four movies and properly develop. Rubbish, yeah. Sad. And you just want to just, not even rest everything gently into this this basket. You just want to just throw everything in it, one after the other, one after the other. And in the end, you're just going to get And you know, yeah, a the, mess, worst, the worst part is that this is what everybody was expecting. All the people who was the naysayers of this film was just totally expecting this. They were saying, yeah, this looking like a mess. It have all the same problems. You know, Hollywood was built not to have a mess like this. And this is exactly what people was worried about. It's almost as if a person who part of the old film guard was like, yeah. You know, if I'm going to make a shit movie and see the complete apocalyptic mess that it was, you know, okay, so here's what I think. The best review for this, in my opinion, was Movie Bob's review. I saw that. He oh it up my and God. Totally he deserved, ripped that yeah, shit to shreds. Deserve it. It deserved it. His oh, review, that, that was, that was fine. Guys, if you point, haven't seen it, go check see it out. It. Movie go, Bob yeah. reviews Batman v Superman. Yeah. Oh go my see God. The damn thing. That was really good. I laughed and it was great. <laughs> I, I laughed. laughed at it. I was laughing. I was I'm like, yes, yes, this yes. This movie deserves right. the low score. This movie sucks. Yeah. And I'm not going to defend this movie. I defend Man of Steel. I'm not going to defend this movie. This right. is buffoonery. No, I understand that, yes. But at the same time, while there is tons of bad in this movie, there are tons... No, sorry. There are some good sprinkles. elements in it. Sprinkles. Um, sprinkles of it. The acting was great. All true. Even though... Only, a, all that, you know, Adia, Amy Adams and Jesse Eisenberg characters no, but Henry Cavill was terrible too, in this too questionable i didn't think henry cavill stood out that much yeah, you know even if you want if you if you even if you want to argue no this is not a superman movie it's a batman movie oh, no by the way, their currently. names are there so oh. henry should stand out just as currently. much as currently ben. you know what's going on right now freaking rob liefeld talking shit about this movie right now i love that rob liefeld the creator of deadpool and cable oh my and God. he is like he out of, because he is like the worst establishment of what 90s comics is right and for he to talk shit about this movie that says that says volumes movies are yeah. mess yeah. here's the thing what is going to cleanse my palate what is going to cleanse my palate to this nonsense tonight of the, of the time of this recording we are going to see the crossover of superman and supergirl and and, and the flash, flash. I expect yes. it to be awesome yeah that prop, that that, that, that yeah i because i i could i could kick back and relax yeah. and know no, that dc props, more or less have tv yeah. down props, you know props to greg, greg berlanti and his team you know Greg, move your head. Yeah, no, Greg, Greg Ballanti and his team, they're doing a good job with that material. I expect this, this episode to be yeah. good. I don't expect it to be waste or nothing like that. It's solid business. Yeah. Um, but, but this is... Another, right. another good. Yeah. Craig Cleanse palette. Civil War is coming. And Civil War is going <laughs> to save this rubbish. <laughs> yes, it will. And it's going to totally embarrass this. I'm going to... Listen, I, sorry to say it, I have to be a total Marvel fan at this point. This is utter buffoonery on the part of DC. Yes. So right let me, now, let me, let me, let me, let me finish. Let me, let me get my rating. Right. So, yes, acting is good. Directing is good most of the time. The editing is horrible at most times. Yeah. You know, just simple establishing shots. Just letting the audience know what's going on instead of, oh, well, this is all alluding to what's going to happen next. And you don't really properly explain things. You don't hint. Okay, just show everything just kind of blatantly. Like, yes, Justice League is coming up. Flash is coming up. All that kind of stuff. But, you know, you're not hinting at it. It's kind of just throwing it in our face, you know? Um, music is, is, is decent, you know, John KXL does a great job alongside Hans Zimmer, you know, and I like how you, you know, you got, you know, you got familiar teams from, you know, Man of Steel and you got some of the dark brood and stuff that they established for Batman. That was cool. Ben Affleck, the saving grace of this movie. If he wasn't in this movie, I would have given this a much lower rating. Um, but you know, yeah, dude, this is just a perfect example of like, I don't even think it's just... Oh, I want to please the fans. I don't think it's as, you know, as simple and basic as that. You know, well, you know, the fans wanted to see Batman fight Superman for years. Oh, we wanted to see Wonder Woman on the big screen for years. Oh, we wanted to see Aquaman for years. You know, it's just, you were, you were a little scared. You were a little frightful. It's like, okay, you know, like, you know, when I, I can imagine when the announcement for this movie came out, you know, a couple of years back, people were just skeptical. You know, it's like, oh, this movie got to fail. Yeah. So... It's just always about trying to one-up each other. You, you saw it in the trailers. You literally saw it in the trailers. And Especially I, with the I, second trailer. No, it's like, yeah, too. hold this. you know. But look at what no, Civil War did. Too. These people are sure that they have no respect for char- the Superman character. They have no trust for the character. That is why we don't get a proper Superman sequ- um, Man of Steel sequel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they exactly. don't have any trust for the character. And, that, yeah. and it showed since then. And we were saying, boy, you have all the naysayers saying this is what they're going to turn out. And it turns exactly yeah. what people think. But it's here's the biggest irony. And I have too much idiot th- defending yeah. this foolishness. Yeah, girl. this is the biggest irony. 
you had the Dark Knight trilogy before. That is my thing. I look at so what stuck. that did in yeah. terms of superhero movies, yeah. period, regardless of what brand it's under, regardless yeah. if it was Marvel, no, DC, Mar- whatever. No, but Man That Steel, just raised the no, bar Man so Steel, high. Man of Steel had a good template to work with. I, again, it have people who hate Man of Steel. I'm not knocking knock, knock those people. I don't understand why you hate it. But for me, Man of Steel could have taken and build from that. Exactly. And it didn't do that it at all. could have, yes. It didn't, it didn't I just want to do... It's it, you know, it just trying know, to do so much hope, with so little. You know what would be surreal and strange? Imagine if these DC movies become like the Transformers movies. That would be so bad. God forbid if it does. Where it. you have a whole bunch of idiots defending it and you know, Oh, it's critic. popcorn right. entertainment. And that nonsense. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's nonsense. Yeah, Dog. so... Uh, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm almost spent I'm almost losing my, 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 my voice here so yeah, let me just get to my rating I'll be straight up honest I didn't love the movie but I didn't hate it either there were things that I liked there were things I didn't like I honestly don't think the director's cut will really make much of a difference but for me as in terms of a movie in terms of just entertainment I will give this a two and a half out of five which is I'm just neutral about it see it if you have to if you really want to see what the big deal is about go and see it don't see it in IMAX, guys. Go to a normal theater and see it. The treaty itself didn't even do anything for me. I didn't need to see it in treaty either. But if you generally don't care about this movie, if you heard all the reviews and you really turn you off and you don't care about it, you don't give a shit, and especially if you didn't care about Man of Steel, then you will not like this movie at all, you know? The, there's a lot of problems with this movie, guys. It's just too glaring for me to just shut my brain off and just enjoy all these flash and stuff. And, you know, even all the flashy moments... Like, you know, the whole doomsday fight was just too much for me. Yeah, but uh, I, I don't, like I said, I don't think the director's cut will make any difference. But I'm just hoping with the other movies, especially with Wonder Woman, that, you know, it would it would at least redeem itself. Yeah. Um, I, and I finally, said, and I finally, said, I wouldn't Wonder blame Wonder? everything on Zack Snyder, but I know his, you know, I want to have all these things. And I, I, I think that has much to play with it. And, you know, the studio's not really trusting material. You know, they were scared. You could bleed, you could see it. They were scared. No it, confidence. You, know. you have no confidence. In no himself. confidence in the material. It's a damn shame. I mean, you know, who suffers? Not just the, not the actors, not the cast and crew. The, the viewers the who pay, the fans who pay the money, like yeah. us, who went to IMAX know, on Good I, Friday I, to see the, this. The worst part is that we, I was rooting for DC, you know. I was rooting for DC yeah. with this. Not I like, actually thought that I this movie, this movie would have be been good. better than we expected. Yeah. Like, oh, we just show too much. Oh, well, they have some tricks up their sleeve. Yeah. What? Killing off Superman, then hints at the end. And oh, this is the last thing, last thing. Last spoiler thing. If they were that ballsy enough, they could have just ended it off with just him being buried. Just, no, like like an Inception type ending now where you think at the very last millisecond the uh, did that. The, the, the dirt rises yeah. and then you just cut the black. No, you see the, 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 the dirt rise and then, you, you know, just for a few seconds. Yeah, he's coming back. Hey, you know, if they were ballsy enough, they could have just yeah, leave it like see, yeah, see maybe right. he'll come or maybe he won't come. Uh, well, but no, they but just cut. I mean, I don't know how you could do it because what you're gonna do? Have it rumble or something? I don't know. Whatever. But whatever. But yeah, that's my Point take. Is, so hated it, hated it. Yeah, Civil War is good. Uh, no, I, oh yeah, speaking of Civil War, I can imagine like Marvel execs just watch this movie, and laughing. you know, just laughing their asses off, yeah. smacking themselves in the forehead like, dude, this is a shoe injured. Civil War is good. Uh, take every this is gonna take the win and even if so, Suicide Squad turned to be a hit fuck right. it we had Dooms we had Deadpool before that right so yeah we could rock back to we, we yeah. own 2016 Marvel yeah. owns 2016 Civil War, look Civil <laughs> War I know, I know I'm beginning the big bet to have Civil War be better but I do expect genuinely expect it to be better than this nonsense I yeah. expect it to be as good as take. the worst and, uh, I like the me, fact that they say me, that this is going to be the longest Marvel yeah, movie so me, they could take the time for me the, the worst case scenario the worst case scenario is to have um the worst case scenario is how about Age of Ultron again? Right, how about Age yeah. Ultron? That's what I was afraid about, right, especially as it going into more fantastical elements with Ant Man and right. you know um, uh, Scarlet Witch and those characters, and even Iron Man. And if, if, if if then if it's not if it mess up, if this one is a mess, and it's going to be a mess only because of the editor. We had to run a jihad on Hollywood editors. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Be a mess. I don't know what's going on with Hollywood yeah. editors. No, like, like I see this now, like, I don't think it'll be a mess. It could be a slight letdown or a little disappointment or a disappointment like what. Each other turn was, right. you know, we were all psyched to see what happened, and then the story, no, no, while linear was just all over the place, going here, there, everywhere, yeah. you know. I don't think it will happen with Civil yeah. War, but dude, if, if Civil think, War my, feels no, my oh. thing is that yeah, that'll be a disappointment. No, but the Russells, I think I, I put a lot of money on them because they, they I, I do think they're very conscientious. They have a good they head on the show. That would again conscientious. That's what the people for Batman v Superman weren't. Mm. They weren't conscientious. Yeah, they, guys. Won't, they don't care. 
They didn't care. Yeah. Just throw in all these characters and we make money. And look, right now we make a shit ton of money. Of course, they make money. Yeah, yeah of course, of course. Make money. That's not the point. And just you know, the 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 controversy. Well, you know, the response it will make people go and see it even more. Because yeah. some people just go be it. Yeah, that movie fucking sucked. Yeah. And other people be like, but that was great, guys. Yeah. So Batman fight Superman and yeah. Wonder Woman was there. Stupid. Yeah, you gotta have that. And I still say, out of the movies for this year, this will be the most divisive. Huge yeah. disappointment. But yeah, it is a disappointment. You know, feeling like you know, I think it's Mark Kermode had a bad review of this as well. But he gave a more disappointing review. Yeah, whatever. All right. Uh, what what channels is he? He's be on. Uh, he's be on BBC, I think. Okay, whatever. right. So yeah. yeah, that's our take on Batman v yeah, Superman right, and up. you know stuff like that. Like I like I say, if you're really curious, I go and see it. it. If you don't care, don't see it. I'm gonna just chill home. Just open my big big bucket of ice cream and watch Supergirl cross over the flash tonight yes and enjoy it yes and enjoy at the it. time of this recording and I'm yeah. sure we'll by the time you hear this you'll see how awesome that episode was I expect it to be good I know it won't be two and a half hours long and we won't yeah, get three hour director's cut but no. I will be satisfied I Just know you'll be satisfied nice, too you'll get a nice 20 minute episode yeah. of good DC material of respecting the characters and yes. have nothing and something to do with, that's not too to dark with, and brooding no, no, and I don't sour. mind. I don't mind dark you know you could do dark in fact, you could take massive counterfactuals. And that, that's what I hate about this. You know, it, it doesn't even take big counterfactuals with DC material, and they still fuck it up. Justice League Gods and Monsters. Massive counterfactuals in the DC universe. Right, and right, right. And they did such a good story with that. What's going on? And a short, short run time, too. Short run yeah. time. Tight. Go to the point. Good editing. Cut yeah. it. Oh, and oh, and, oh, gosh. Okay, okay. One, one more thing we do have to mention. This movie runs about two and a half hours long, and there are moments that drag, drag guys, yeah. that really drag. And this is all no, yeah, try to establish I, when I watch back, Batman. When I watch, so, back, uh, yeah, it, uh, when I watch back the movie, I was watching, I just check my watch to see how long it takes until Batman had to fight Superman. It's like close to two hours. I, I, I counted an hour and a half until yeah, they it's, actually... It's ridiculously break. long. Yeah, and the moment where they, where they, where they, where they met tired. the first time, I was like, I'm tired, oh, well, yeah. I'm tired, I'm tired. You know, yes, yes, yes. Ricardo is fed up. I am losing I my, my, my breath, so... <laughs> just pissing him off talking about this, this garbage truck of a Yeah, so I know, I know it will make someone's worst of 2016. And my yeah, it's going to. I'm pretty sure that this yeah. is a garbage fire. If the director's cut... If, Sucks yeah, that it will make it mine. Will it will make yeah, mine. Garbage definitely. Cut, the, the director's cut had a thing. This as yeah. is is hot garbage. I'm sorry. Yeah. Before we 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 part ways, you yeah. know, um, Ricardo, where oh, can right. we find you online? Yeah, we have a we have you a know, space if, if, if if you want people, if if, if you wanna, you know, bash people's views on the movie. Yeah, I got, I gotta know. I gonna be cussing you out if you comment any nonsense. Fuck and you, Ricardo. Yeah, Papa V Superman no. is the best movie I ever. I can't cuss out anybody who can comment shenanigans. But you could find me at Ampersat. Uh, M-E-D-D-Y mm-hmm. at Armedi on Twitter. Right. And you can type in Ricardo Medina on Facebook and find me there. I'll be talking about all of this stuff and I'll just reply to whatever comments and statements and any views you have. Movie sucked. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, you could find me um, on Twitter, Legally Black MGB, MGB uh, capital letters. Uh, you could find me on Facebook. Uh, just look for Matthew Bailey. You could also look for a Legally Black official fan base where you could see the links for, uh, you know, this podcast and other stuff. You could see my Manistee review as well, too. My written review there as well, too. I, I po- reposted it recently. Um, also, you know, on SoundCloud as well, too, you could find the links to, you know, the other podcasts that, re- that we've recorded before. Um, and I will just say this included. I am still a Zack Snyder fan. I think he's... A great visual filmmaker, you know, 300. Watchmen, I still think, is his greatest work. Even right now to, to Donnie Dead, you know, that was his, you know, his, his big break. Yeah. Sucker Punch, bullshit. Yeah. But I'll say Batman v Superman is better than that, that Sucker Punch by far. But those two are like, you know, yeah. his bottom yeah. his bottom yeah. bitches right now. Yeah. Two, <laughs> two major disappointments right now. Um, I still defend Man of Steel as well, too. And, you know, um, I still personally... Would would watch Man of Steel in a hurry compared right. to this one, you yeah. know, or, or compared to the theatrical cut of this movie? Whatever. So we, we'll, we'll let we'll let time tell us. And, yeah. You know. And and oh, oh, and by the way, guys, of course, too, you know, what did what did you think about Batman v Superman? Did you like the film? Did you do you defend the film or do you hate it as much as Ricardo? Did you think it's one well, of the worst piles of shite mm-hmm. to ever hit the big screen in you know years since Superman four? Uh, you know. <laughs> you know, that one. And Superman 3 texted. Um, did you see Daredevil Season 2? What did you think about it? Do you think that, you know, um, they didn't give uh, Punisher enough time, you know, screen time, or you think it was too much about Electra? Or do you think it was a superior season compared to the last one? 
Now, what do you think about Zootopia? You know, do you think it was a great animated film? Do you think it's one of Disney's best works? Do you think it will make it to your top ten, or you know, it's just a above average Disney film? You know, comment below, let us know, and yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, we have uh, Hardcore Henry coming up. Yeah, Hardcore Hopefully. Henry is coming up. Um, yeah, we're we we're, we're good. We're supposed to get the witch yeah. down here April, in Trinidad yeah. in April. April. I want to see that. Yeah. You know, a lot of good things April, about it. April is a slow month, so that's yeah, where, that's where things die down for a little bit. Um, um, because Batman v Superman, the plan is for Batman v Superman to dominate April. Man. Yeah, like, like what, until um, Civil War comes right, up. Right, it's supposed to. Do, the, the plan is to dominate April until that's like how Fantastic. I'm sorry, Fast and the Furious did. Yeah, same thing. Same, um, same idea. What else? Jungle Books coming out as right. well too. Yeah, not too sight fit, but you know yeah. the the trailers and even the posters and stuff looks. Yeah, you know, a bunch of decent. stuff coming. So um, but what else? What else? Until this extent, we gain Barbershop Tree. Yeah. Why? Yeah. I don't know, but well, you know well. the first two were you know marginally decent, so you know who knows. Right. Might check it out. So yeah, that's pretty much about it. We are spent from you know just talking about the you know, frustration. Frustration. We really want to like think, this movie, guys, I think but you, yeah. you know, so much salt just rising my blood pressure. Yeah. Just piss me off. So. I think yeah. I know. Guess, I know. Get the salt metaphor. metaphor by <laughs> yeah, yeah. So hopefully, you know, like like what Ricardo says, you know, tonight's well, pre- of you know, the night of this um, recording, um, you know, the Super Gill and Flash crossover will just make us, yeah. you know, remind it's us why, why we should care about DC, yeah. you know, <laughs> until Civil War comes out. So yeah. until next time, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Whenever you listen to this, this is Matthew Billy, and this is a uh, Ricardo Medina. Hello. Yeah. Who Thank is? You. Who is? Slowly, you know he's he's still pissed, but you know he's 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 getting he's getting around. He'll he'll be back to normal. Yeah, I just had I just some excuse. Yeah. So until next time, guys. You know, civil war is gonna dominate it. Just calling it right. <laughs> you know, just say it one time. Civil war is gonna take it, guys. So yeah. Until next time, guys. Later. Peace. Peace.